Oh, so no one is no one of a good jan. No, I said, Pila Babunjan. I see honorable Hanif. I see honorable Hanif is here today. You are welcome, honorable Hendrix. Mm. Thank you very much. Then I, I think we need. I also see Ratao there, my good old friend. Uh, nice to uh, be in his presence. Who's those in Honorable Henry? Uh, 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 Honorable uh, uh, Tao. Oh, you mean Honorable DM Tao? Yeah. So you are happy to see DM Tao? Very happy. I haven't seen him for a long time. <laughs> DM. <laughs> DM. <laughs> DM. DM Tao, you hear? So DM Tao is very lucky to be somebody so happy. He's the only person whom somebody so happy to see him in this group. Honorable Hendrix is a very good friend, honorable chair. I just envy you, DM, that somebody so happy to see you. <laughs> wow. Mm, how nice is it and shit. I think for <laughs> I was trying to do to check my roll call as to who is in, who's not in. I think we just need to now start with our meeting. Uh, we do form a quorum. That's what I was trying to do to scroll on the attendees. Um, let I, I, I'm not. I was not given a list of the colleagues from Ekuru Lane their names so that I must be able to acknowledge. Can I check before we start with the meeting who is from Egur Leni? Can I check? Oh, now it's, 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 it's Mark Wilson is from Egur Leni. Who else? The other people who have logged in here, I can't see, I can't identify them. Andy, Andy Who Lane. else from Egoruleni is here? As well as Paris. I only see one Mark Wilson. Yes, they are joining. They are not yet, they've not yet joined. Not yet, not yet. Because they we can't start, start a meeting without Egoruleni colleagues. Honorable Oberman, welcome. Honorable Oberman, you're welcome. Thank you, Chair Hassan. Okay. We're still waiting for our guests. We can't start a meeting without them. I only see one person who, whose gadget has identified himself as Mark Wilson. Mark? Morning, Chairperson. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm well in yourself. Who's, who are the other members of your delegation who are supposed to attend this meeting with you? Uh, the executive Maya has already joined the IRC. He has joined and he has identified himself as who? I think he's joined and uh, Nomsa. Nomsa. Hey! Majoro, I only see Nomsa here. Little did I know that Nomsa is the executive mayor of Ekorule. Oh, <laughs> so he's here. <laughs> executive mayor, little did I know that Nomsa is yourself here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they call it deputy mayor here. Yeah. They call it deputy mayor. And yeah. the city manager is also in, eh? Uh, the city manager is not in. You just invited a few HODs who yes. have got there to assist me with. So if you are here, then we can start. I was just waiting for you to log in. And it's long you have logged in under NOMSA. NOMSA should have said, hey, this is the executive mayor. Okay, colleagues. Uh, I think we should just need to start with our meeting today. And... Uh, Executive Mayor, we have invited yourself today uh, amidst the growing concern as the Mestro has become the second largest uh, COVID-19 hotspot in Gauteng after Johannesburg. 
So as custodians of the Disaster Management Act, we intend interacting with uh, all geographical areas declared as hotspots for COVID-19 in terms of the current disaster management regulations. We have already received uh, the COVID-19 readiness briefings from Etequini, Cape Town, and Johannesburg metros. Over the next several days, we will also hear from Tuane, Nelson Mandela Bay, and Buffalo City metros. Yesterday, uh, the constitutional court delivered the judgment that found uh, deficiencies in the regulation in respect to of alert levels for entry. The court also ordered a review and amendment of the regulations as to prevent rationality and justifiable infringement on constitutional rights. We have to deal with the question of whether the judgment invalidates, invalidates the declaration of Ekurulene and other geographical areas as hotspots for COVID-19. In the meantime, the current regulations are still valid for the next 14 days. This allows us to continue with our oversight. Today, we would like the Kurulene to take us into confidence that its COVID-19 readiness plans cater for all the metro's residents, including informal dwellers. Executive uh, May, I'm raising this point in particular in view of the circumstance of the criticism around the provisions of mobile chemical toilets in the metro by informal settlement dwellers in the East Range. It is therefore important that such grievances do not dilute the inclusiveness and appeal of the metro's COVID-19 response plans to all residents, including definitely the poor of the poorest. We would like also to obtain clarity on the city's use of emergency municipal funds to ensure that the metro uses this for rational project. In this way, we can intervene with confidence in circumstances such as those mentioned in the presentation where they, apply, where they applied for disaster relief funds are not uh, materializing. However, we were very concerned at the media reports that the city was using municipal uh, funds to procure a COVID-19 vaccine from Cuba. Cuba. As far as we know, a COVID-19 vaccine does not, does not yet uh, does not, has, has not yet, does not yet exist. In, on the other item on today's agenda is the consideration of petitions relations to a proposed housing development in Alberta, as well as the illegal occupation of Spence 1 1224 in Watsonville, 87 in Alberta North. This will not be our first interaction with the Metro on petition because you'll recall in December 2019, we met with some of your officials and the NMC to consider a petition on the fire incident at Glen Marais substation. However, this is the item that was sponsored by Honorable uh, Waters. Uh, Today, Honorable Bachman, in his capacity as the representative of Alberta constituency, we also need the introduction of the petition. But what we will do first, uh, we will first deal with the city metro on the on the on the COVID-19 response. Then we will deal with the petitions later. Time permitting. What I want also to do is to ask the Metro to be brief in the presentation so that we can allow uh, members to interact with the presentation. We want to thank you, Executive Mayor, and the team in that uh, you, you managed to send us the presentation on time in response to the issues that we've raised. And then that gave the members ample time to go through the presentation. So. They have read the presentation, so I think the executive mayor, as you do your presentation, it will just be solely to highlight the issues that you, you want the committee to consider, and then we'll take it from there. Without wasting much time, I just want to do the housekeeping rules. Can all members and attendees of this meeting switch off their phones or put them on silence? 
And then whenever the speaker finishing speaking, can you always remember to put your mics on mute? Because we have challenges where in the uh, members or uh, uh, participants of the meeting don't mute their microphones and then it interrupt the speaker who's on the floor. Secondly, you must all remember this, uh, it's, this, this, this sitting is being televised by Channel 4 of our parliament. So it's very prudent that the, all the people that are on the screen by now, the NOMSA, the executive mayor's camera was supposed to be on, uh, Honorable GG's camera was supposed to be on, and Mark Wilson's camera was supposed to be on, because it can't be that then the people who are participating in this meeting can't see your faces. So as I'm talking, because you are the four other three who are on the screen, can you all be switching on your cameras? So that then when you speak and interact, the viewers who are at home and everybody who's following this, uh, they must be able to see you. So that's the issue that I'm requesting. Norm, sir, can you switch on the camera of the mayor? Executive Mayor Gigi, put on your camera. And Mark Wilson, can you put on your camera on of you? That's what you should do. All the time when you are on the podium, you need to put on your camera so that then we can be able to see you. Basically, that's what one's trying to do. Then uh, I wanted to first confirm the attendance of uh, the colleagues for the records because this is a committee meeting. Honorable Hussein is here present. Honorable Brink is here. And then it's Honorable uh, Darren Bergman is here. Honorable Gisela Operman is here. Honorable um, Gigi Mpumza is here. Honorable Inko Silutuli is here. Uh, Honorable uh, Hendrix is here. Honorable Kurnevald is here. Yes, those are the members that are present, unless if I omitted somebody. Also to welcome uh, the, the Deputy Minister Prax Daus in our midst and welcome you Executive Mayor with your team, including the City Manager. And then I think as you present, you also uh, tell us who are the MMC who's, who's in our midst. So basically that's it. The apologies that we got was from Honorable Mkalipi, who's currently attending a the WIPS forum meeting in Parliament. Uh, that's the, and then also the request from the MEC. Shirin, what does that request say from the MEC? Shirin? Shirin there? No, the request by the MEC, there's also a request by the Deputy Minister to leave earlier to attend to other engagements. And then there is an apology by the MEC uh, 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 that uh, for human settlement, urban planning and character that he won't be able to attend the joint the meeting uh, due to some uh, commitments, uh, but there will be officials from the department attending the meeting. I just yeah. want to then hear yeah, the names of the officials from mm -hmm. the department who are here. What, what is the name of the officials who are here? From Houghton? Uh, good morning, Honorable. Do we have officials uh, from Houghton? Good morning, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair. Yes, I can hear you. Good, good morning. Yes. My, my, my name is Tafita David. My name is Tafita David Mokwena, uh, Executive Supporting okay. the Office of the HOD. What do you do? Uh, we, in Executive supporting the office of the HOD. Uh, we also have uh, Ms. Obando, who's, who's, who's the Director of Governance and Traditional Affairs. And then we also have uh, Conrad Jardin, who's the uh, Public Participation Director. 
Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you so much. Executive Mayor, over to you. You will also introduce your delegation. Um, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I am joined by the city manager, uh, Dr. Imoji Bukazi, and also the HOD of um, uh, Energy, Mr. Mark Wilson, and the HOD of City Planning, uh, Balisa, the HOD of, um, uh, of Human Settlement, Mr. Andy Limokaluta. Those are the officials that, that are here. Uh, thank you very much. Can I proceed with the presentation? Yes, 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 Executive Mayor, you can, can proceed. Yes, we, we have submitted a detailed report, uh, which I hope members have uh, had sight of. Uh, basically, the purpose is to provide a report back <coughs> with regard to our responses on COVID as a city, but also to provide some progress on some of the petitions that uh, were received. As a way of introduction, um, you know that uh, the national state of disaster was declared. Uh, as cities, we had to make sure that we put institutional framework in place uh, to ensure that um, uh, we can be, have a functioning municipality. Um, uh, we do have um, a, 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 a good many command council, which is a political structure chaired by myself seats every Mondays as well as Fridays. Then we also have the command center, which is administrative, is chaired by the city manager. We also meet on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. We have a talk that we set up uh, when the, the process was starting. It's chaired by the HOD of the, of, uh, the, uh, of DEMS, as well as the, 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 the they, are, they are having their daily meetings try and update us, but also to interact with the provincial uh, command cancer. With regard to COVID st statistics, uh, these are numbers confirmed as of this morning. Uh, we've got 825 uh, uh, um, uh, cases, uh, of which 586 uh, are recoveries, meaning that we have 289 active uh, cases, and we have 12 people who have died in the city as a result of uh, COVID. Uh, we've done a total of 1.428 uh, uh, screening, and we've conducted about 18,725 tests to date. So those uh, are the statistics of the, the, of the areas. In terms of the <coughs> comprehensive response areas on health, we have uh, 93 clinics, all of them are operational. We have had uh, incidences in a few of the clinics where we identified cases and we acted uh, swiftly. Like the case in the Tuduza clinic, uh, there was a problem in Oslores <coughs> clinic where we moved in quickly. We have two quarantine sites that have been established. One is at the Transnet School of Excellence. <coughs> it has about 400, uh, 400 beds. Another one is at the Telecom Training Academy, which is about 91. We also have uh, additional 300 additional beds that have been <coughs> rearranged by the provincial government at Betaklova Hospital in the Minister. And uh, we have about three uh, uh, shelters for the that are currently active. Um, uh, the numbers are not so so big. Uh, we've got the numbers there. So, so one of the shelters was closed because there were there were no there were no people there. People started leaving the shelter. Now, um, with regard to the provision of water <coughs> and, and sanitation, all all um, the hundred and nineteen informal settlement um, uh, had about one thousand five hundred and eleven stand pipes being covered. And then additional 187 uh, water tanks uh, were, were installed, and extra 37 stand pipes were, were installed during COVID. And we have chemical toilets. I, I heard you, Chair, saying that uh, there's a complaint, and maybe we'll have need to deliberate more on it because, uh, from our standard, our, our from our understanding, 
uh, looking at in comparison with all other metros, we are providing the largest number of uh, um, uh, in of uh, chemical toilets across the city. Uh, I can tell you that uh, almost uh, we have one toilet that is servicing about five families, and the situation before was quite bad. Uh, the, the, situation, the situation has improved significantly. Uh, in terms of the precautionary measures uh, to mitigate uh, the, 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 the health of our workers, uh, all our working employees uh, are provided with PPEs like gloves, masks, uh, mounted sanitizers in all our buildings. Uh, we had uh, hand soap in, in all the toilets, and uh, we procured about uh, a thousand of the digital, digital thermometer for all our 683 municipal buildings that we have here. And we are ensuring that every worker who is coming back based on the phase approach is provided with masks and so on and so on. Those that uh, um, can still be productive working from home are encouraged to be staying at home and working from home. With regard to the second pillar, which is around food security, I must just say that on the 14th of April, uh, we launched a, a, a food bank at our Spritz Fresh Produce Market because that's an area where we're dealing with food. Uh, and that food bank, that, uh, it must be noted that uh, there the are no municipal funds being utilized uh, to create this food bank. We depend on donations from citizens and I must say that we work with all the political political parties in Tanzania uh, to ensure that uh, we manage uh, the fair distribution of food across the needy communities uh, um, <clears throat> uh, to date about 118 donors have come through uh, with the estimated value of about uh, 8.2 million we do not accept cash we ask people to go buy in the big supply and share with us the receipts and then our health professionals get to check the food, the quality and so on. Um, I must say that uh, to date we've distributed about 25,680 food parcels uh, to about 128,400 uh, residents. Uh, it has reached that number across and the need is, is, uh, is more. Our people are hungry, they need, they need to be assisted and we are doing our best um, to, to do that. We have targeted uh, places like the old age homes, uh, places like the hostels. We are now currently dealing with the uh, with the informal uh, informal settlement. We've done over 12 informal settlements, and we have um, divided all these 119 informal settlements uh, for each MMC so that we can have a drive to make sure that uh, there is provision of food in the informal settlement. Um, the <coughs> the target is to distribute about a thousand uh, food parcel a day, uh, which is very difficult logistics to, to manage. And every Friday, uh, we we visit with the members of the mayoral committee. We visit different informal settlements, and we distribute about five thousand every Friday as a program. <clears throat> Moving to the third pillar around um, enforcement and compliance of measures. Uh, all our law enforcement uh, uh, mechanisms are in full operation. We are doing crime prevention, accident management, bylaws, as well as the COVID regulation. Uh, the focus on social distancing in high risk areas such as the shopping malls, the informal settlement, the hostels, the, taxi, the, the townships, the taxi rents has been our priority in, the, in this space. Uh, uh, with SAPs and as well as standard as well as provincial safety, especially on our major routes like the N12, the N17 towards Mississippi. That to, to the barriers, you know that the regulations specify the number of 50. All funerals are being monitored to ensure that we can comply uh, with the regulation. To date, 1,595 arrests have been made. Uh, for contravening the Disaster Management Act, especially the lockdown. This is uh, as at the 31st of May. And we were issued for COVID related issues in this pillar. And the fourth, the fourth pillar is around uh, the economic response plan. <coughs> we 
we received a total of 6,287 application uh, for uh, traders' permit, and 3,885 applications were approved, and 2,402 uh, applications were rejected for non-compliance, uh, especially with the get to Immigration Act uh, or, insuff or insufficient documentation. Uh, others were issues of just cross-border in the main. Um, Formerly essential service traders are operational, like the pharmacies, the retail food stores, public distribution, um, um, the I must say that the 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 the, 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 the executive mayor, the city manager, the chief whip, the speaker, um, the HODs, uh, together with two coalition coalition partners. We have been contributing um, to the Solidarity Fund as an institution to date. We've contributed about uh, 1,032,000 uh, to the Solidarity Fund, and uh, this being the last month of June, we committed our salaries for three months. Uh, this, uh, that money has gone to the Solidarity Fund, and uh, we, we've provided um, um, uh, the, the <clears throat> The information so that uh, at some point we'll then have to have a process to thank those who have contributed when the country was was in need. Um, as of uh, 30 March, uh, we've done the following: uh, we've done a number of taxi taxi ranks that have been disinfected. Uh, um, about 49 49,361 taxis have been disinfected, and buses about 219. Uh, the taxi ranks we've done about 50 taxi ranks in terms of just ensuring that uh, we meet with the, the, the requirement uh, preparation is underway for scholar transport as soon as it's ready uh, we know that there are still some challenges but uh, we are alert to get it and then we'll also be talking to prasa with regard to the stations as soon as they are ready to open so that we can ensure that also they, they comply with laws and, and regulations with regard to the fifth pillar around social mobilization and social solidarity, uh, all religious groups, NGOs, NPO are supportive uh, to date. No incident has been reported uh, of breaching any regulations uh, so, so far, so we're quite happy with that. Local businesses are heeding the call that has been made by myself uh, <clears throat> to donate uh, consumables and non-consumables items to the food bank. Uh, we've met with uh, uh, different stakeholders, uh, including religious fraternity. All political parties uh, are working uh, with us, and uh, they, they, we do have a communication mechanism in place with regard to, uh, to communicating all the efforts that we, we, are, we are making. Now, the, we, we, we have been, uh, with regard to the, the, this fifth pillar again, <coughs> we had to uh, analyze the uh, cemeteries um, and look at the number that we, we can have in terms of the capacity. Uh, so we've looked into the north, in the east, and the south. Uh, and in, in the <coughs> in the main, uh, we're quite happy with the number of graves that we have, and we think that we could be able to uh, uh, to do to do more. Uh, uh, so we have a capacity to bear about 80, 81,000 people if there could be a crisis, and we want to escalate this map, this number to about 100,000 or so in terms of our readiness uh, in the main. Uh, uh, the land for the mass burial, uh, we are uh, busy uh, sourcing the land. Uh, we identified some of the future <laughs> pieces that could be used as cemeteries. And uh, our planning team are now hard at work to ensure that uh, we, we are ready. Uh, the, the private sector capacity is also being looked at, and, and the capacity of the undertakers is just is just above 2,000 uh, bodies. So, and we think that uh, uh, we, we will need to find ways working with the provincial government, the national government, to build more capacity uh, if things get uh, spiraled out of hand uh, in this regard. With regard to the <coughs> Uh, decongestion of informal settlement and hostels as of the 15th of May. Uh, we will no longer focus on the five previously identified informal settlements. Now there are two informal settlements that will be decongested. One is Madela Gufa, one and two in 
you can miss, and the other one is Ergo in Brackbar. Um, sorry. Um, then the, the reblocking program uh, is uh, is continuing, so we are using it to continue to to reblock because it's our normal program. And then the procurement of temporary residential unit is still in progress, and we, we expected that the the soon as they are done, they can conclude, and then they'll give us feedback in that regard. Um, um, now, turning into the impact on the revenue of the city, um, normally we collect about 94% of our uh, of our of, of our revenue, but in March we collected, we dropped to about 86.9%. In April we further dropped to 67.2%, and uh, we project uh, because we are closing and looking at the figures, we will drop to about 65% or so. Uh, but in June, we're hoping that we can start picking up because we have been given a clear directive to enforce credit control. And uh, this this is an issue that uh, we, we, we needed to raise. And we've looked into that on page 19, uh, what we lost on electricity, on water, on assessment rate, on sewer, on refuse removal, and other services. So the table there provides those uh, those answers, and I hope members have looked into it. And the next one is for May, is May June, and the last one it just projects the 2020-2021 financial year in terms of those issues and what we think we are likely to lose. So, so that, that's that's the the, 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 the proposal. Now, um, before the the last meeting we had with the uh, with the minister of Cocta and the uh, Deputy Ministers, uh, we were considering some proposals. We were going to take them to council. Uh, they are from page 22, 23, uh, 24. Uh, uh, yeah, all those. So I'm not going to be presenting them because we were told that we must not introduce measures now. And um, uh, so we, we, we took back the items in council. So I will not present that portion of the proposal. Now, now the the, the overall challenges, um, we note uh, that we have been identified as a hotspot. We, uh, Deputy Minister, maybe you can still help us today. We've been looking at this formula of uh, five in every 100,000 uh, so that we can look into our numbers, whether or not we qualify. Because we, we you know, there are few people who have attempted to come up with a formula. We, 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 we we think that uh, the, 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 the numbers at the time were telling us a different story. The second challenge is just uh, non adherence uh, uh, to social distancing, especially in the informal settlement. It's very, very difficult uh, uh, to, 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 to do that. And uh, there, is, uh, there are attempts of land invasion during this time because people have been told they won't be removed. But we have been, our law enforcement agencies have been. Uh, doing a great work to ensure that we can prevent uh, we can prevent those. Uh, there is sudden migration towards the online method of public participation, and we've seen our budget. Uh, the response is positive. Uh, people are going online, and we think that is a positive positive, positive area. The, the, we think that uh, given our population, we need uh, mass screening uh, across so that we can really begin to isolate uh, uh, our people. Now, what sort of assistance we require? Uh, we want to increase uh, screening and testing, as I said. We want to increase the visibility of law enforcement and tighten security control measures. We want to ensure that uh, regulation compliance in public uh, workspaces in partnership with all the employers so that uh, we don't have mass cases when people are returning uh, to work. Uh, we need, uh, we need to, uh, to define the criteria for allocating and, access, and, and, and accessing this 20 billion that has been spoken to, we believe that it can have a role to play, especially in, in dealing with the revenue losses that have been identified. Uh, we've applied for the disaster relief grant on the 4th of April, and uh, um, for an amount of about 32 million or something, we, we are waiting outcome in this regard. So that concludes the the overall COVID uh, response in terms of five pillars and additional inf information that uh, you would have requested. Chair, can I stop here? Thank you.
Chairperson, you take over. Uh, Hussein Chairperson, if you have the opportunity. Okay. Okay. Members, members, uh, can I see a show of hands? Bring the chairperson, please. Opperman. Honorable Uh Yes. Uh, Bring chairperson, please. Members. Opperman chairperson. Followed by you. Bring chairperson. Opperman chairperson. Only honorable Lucen one change and I think the provision by the Chairperson, Brink, please. Honorable Brink. Honorable Oberman, who else? Yes, who else? I've noted Honorable Hussein, Honorable Ring, Honorable Umberman. Is that all? Khadeva, you end up. Uh, Honorable Chair, um, yes, note me. Colleagues. Honorable Chair, can you hear me? Colleagues. Can you hear me? I I think you are struggling to hear them, Chairperson. You are struggling to hear Honorable Lord Ebene, but you can hear me. Honorable members. Honorable members, can you hear me? Yeah, but you're... It's, uh, it, it's uh, Honorable Hadev, I can hear you. It Honorable appears members. as if you can't hear me. If, if you can hear me, Chair, please note me. As... Can you hear me, Chair? I... Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Who else uh, uh... want to speak? So we'll proceed. The Honorable Hussein. Honorable Hussein. Uh, Chair, thank you very much. Um, Honorable Hussein. I'm, I'm here. I'm Can not sure if you could. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Honorable Hussein, you can proceed. All right. Uh, so, Leos, I think that your your microphone is not muted, so we're getting some sounds there from your keypad. Yeah, uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, can you, I just want to check whether I'm loud and clear and you're picking me up on your side? Yes, I am, I am. Thank you, uh, let me then proceed. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, may I just uh, appreciate... Uh, Can I do 
Uh, I'm waiting on you, Chairperson. I, I'm not sure if you are. All right. Thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I wanted to just uh, uh, appreciate some of the, uh, the the very positive aspects of the presentation by the Executive Mayor. Um, in particular, I wanted to give some recognition to uh, what I picked up uh, shortly after the President's uh, announcement in calling on South Africans to contribute to the Solidarity Fund. And if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Mayor Massina is probably the only mayor in the country that has contributed 33% of his, of his salary. Um, and if that, is, uh, if that is the truth, as I pick up in the media, I think that it, uh, we must give him some recognition uh, for that contribution, which is uh, admirable, I think, in my view. And I, 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 I would have hoped, Chairperson, that uh, the same level of solidarity that he has shown at a time when all South Africans were coming together and in, in unity to support each other, uh, I would have hoped that his, his, uh, his public activities and comments thereafter would have been in line with uh, with that level of unity and solidarity, but unfortunately, uh, it appears that some of his public comments have not been in line with that, and I would like to give him an opportunity to respond to that uh, as well. And I'm, re I'm referring to Mr. Um, uh, Mayor Massina's recent comments about uh, the collapse of, of his, and the support for the recent comments, the collapse of the white economy, as he put it. Uh, I just think, Chairperson, that at a time when all South Africans need to stand together to save our country from absolute ruin, given the very difficult circumstances under which we, we are at, uh, and the same level of unity that was pronounced by our president, unfortunately, in my view, was not followed through by Mayor Massina in his recent comments. What I find quite fascinating is that uh, for, uh, although Mayor Massina appears uh, to say that the white economy must collapse, it's the same companies that he stood side by side receiving millions of rands of donations to the, for, for the poor in his own municipality. And I really would like to appeal to uh, Mayor Massina as, as a leader in our society uh, and as the mayor of all South Africans in his, uh, in his city that in the least uh, he would exercise the same level of, of unity and solidarity that is required from all of us, regardless of which race, what, what background we come from, but to attack the very people who you are calling upon to assist you, in my view, I think is childish. Mayor Messina seems to have done uh, uh, quite a good job uh, over the period in, in his municipality, during the period of the lockdown, and has been fairly active in trying to provide as much support as possible for communities in his municipality. Uh, he talked also about the reduction in collection of revenue in his municipality, which is understandable and I think is the same pattern that, has, uh, that we are seeing in many municipalities as communities struggle to be able to meet uh, their financial uh, responsibilities, including businesses. Uh, and we understand that that reduction in, in, in collection of revenue is going to affect uh, and impact mostly on the poorer communities. Now, if you want white businesses to, to fall apart, I'm afraid your revenue collection, uh, Honorable Mayor, is, is going to go even get even further worse. And what you should be doing is trying to assist as many businesses as possible, regardless of whether it's owned by black people or white people or, or colored people so that as South Africans, all of us together can prosper under these circumstances and come together regardless of what our race is and help those who don't have, and you should be the center of that leadership uh, to make sure that those who have are able to share with those who don't have. And that actually has been the spirit in which all South Africans have come together 
I've seen it, you've seen it, we all have seen it in social media, in all over South Africa. Those who have, we're willing to share with those who don't have. And your comments, which, were, which I believe were insulting against white South Africans and white-owned business, I'm afraid, is childish and does not support the leadership that is required from somebody in a senior position like yourself. That's the only comment that I wanted to make, and I want to give Mayor Messina an opportunity to perhaps correct that. Maybe the media and myself and everybody else had misinterpreted his comments, and so maybe today is the opportunity for him to be able to correct it and behave like the true leader that we all want to see in our society. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Lusen. Uh, Honorable Brink. Thanks very much, Chair. The most concerning part of the... Thank you, Chair. The most concerning part of the presentation to me is the collapse of revenue collection, as indicated in the Mayor's presentation. The Metro collected 86.9% of billings in March and 67.2% of billings in April. The revenue shortfall for the next financial year, which uh, starts at the end of June, is 1.2%. I would just like to ask the Mayor what the effect of this is going to be, especially on the capital program of the city uh, and on service delivery. And the second question is, given that there's no indication of support measures, relief measures having been received from national government, uh, what is the mayor and the city lobbying for in terms of support? Um, to, to mitigate the economic impact of the lockdown on the city's finances and its ability to deliver services. Uh, is the mayor happy with that support? Uh, and if not, what is he lobbying for? And, and what has he told the minister and the MEC uh, about uh, the, the impact of, of the lockdown on municipal revenues and what is needed? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Brink. Honorable Oberman. Thank you, Chairperson. I'd like to ask the Mayor, you have increased your indigent support budget and relief measures during COVID-19 often creates a lot of expectations for long-term support. So I'd like to know your current shelters how will you continue your responsibility to the homeless? And I want to know, how will you resolve the provision of chemical toilets in your informal settlements post-COVID? And then you have established a food bank, which I applaud. I'd like to know, what are the qualification criteria for being distressed? And how do you ensure that the food does indeed reach the intended beneficiaries. And then you've been in the media lately, and I see you've applied for 32.7 million of the 20 billion municipal COVID-19 relief fund. And the media says that you plan to use this emergency fund to buy a vaccine from China, as alleged in the media. Is this true, Mr. Mayor? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Oberman. Honorable Hadevan. Honorable thank Hadevan. you. Yes, no, thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, first, let me apologize for joining the meeting late, uh, struggling uh, with technology to connect. And as such, I would uh, request the committee if I ask a question that has been covered uh, by the Honorable Mayor, please bear with me. Uh, but when I listened to, to the Honorable uh, Mayor, first, let me welcome the presentation. Uh, the uh, Honorable Masina, you spoke about needing assistance in, in terms of uh, enforcement of e, the, 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 the lockdown regulation with particular reference to informal settlement and social distance. Are you implying that your current plans and the resource in terms of law enforcement agencies are not enough to, to be able to attend to this matter of uh, 
compliance, particularly when it comes to informal settlement. The, the, the second issue is in, in relation to the article that was published uh, in, in, in Daily Maverick on the 17th of April, where you were quoted as saying uh, you, would, you, you would want to uh, procure the vaccine from Cuba uh, using the emergency fund. Is this still part of your plan in, in terms of, of, of COVID-19? And how far are you in, 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 in that regard? The question that I would also want to get a clarity on, Chair, in relation to the 32.7 million disaster grant, what what is the the latest in relation to to that application? And I would like if uh, we can get the response from a representative of of COPTA, uh, the the, the application by by, by the municipality. Um, Also, I did not quite get your discomfort in relation to the formula used to identify an area as a hotspot. You, you said something about the, uh, that formula five into uh, 100,000. Can you just please unpack what, what, what is your discomfort in relation to that area? Uh, lastly, Chair, uh, the issue of uh, the busy identified areas or, or hotspot uh, your taxi rank, uh, especially when communities come back to, to from work, uh, if we can just get a sense in, in, in terms of uh, measures in place to address such. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Okay. Executive Mayor. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Hello, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair, and to yeah. all members of the committee. Uh, let me give uh, perhaps my, apo- my apologies to somebody from the Eastern Cape lo- logged out. Executive Mayor, somebody from the Eastern Cape logged out. I, he didn't raise his hand. He wants now to ask a question to you. Can we allow him? Honorable Mpuza, my apologies, Executive Mayor. And, and Chair, it's Mike, Chair, it's Mike Waters. I can't raise my hand on my iPad. May I ask a question as well? Thank you. Okay, it's fine. I, yes. Colleagues, I um, asked earlier. Chair, yes. Chair, may I also ask a question, please? So, Who, who's there? Hello. Hello. So you're finally yeah. in. So okay, you're finally yeah. in. I'm, I'm mindful that today... Uh, this system is giving us some technical glitches. Everybody is complaining of logging mm-hmm. in. So it will be uh, Honorable Mpumza, Honorable Waters, and Honorable So, ne? in that order. Okay. Over to you, Honorable Mpumza. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Hello, Chair. How are you? Yes, How are you? Proceed. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Chair, Chair I, I, I had struck it uh, 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 while the mayor was presenting. Um, I was still connected. But at the time you were saying that we must raise the uh, comments or questions, mm. I find that I had been disconnected. But I'm back now. Okay. Chair, in, 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 uh, in welcoming the report by the executive mayor, um, uh, Chair, I think let's, let's commend the mayor for having uh, established the food bank to contribute to food security uh, for the people of February. But uh, from this uh, uh, establishment of this food bank for food parcels, uh, can the mayor uh, actually assist us explain uh, to me what verification criteria is he using to identify the applicants and beneficiaries and what arrangement uh, the metro has put in place? to ensure that the food parcels uh, that are provided to the need and the poor and the distressed are are actually uh, involved, are actually ensuring a balanced nutrition so that at the end of the day, our people are being assisted. The other area, uh, I saw that he was indicating that uh, perhaps they are confronting a problem where revenue collection is declining. Um, uh, is declining 
uh, at this particular time uh, during this COVID-19. Now, in their plans, what have they put up uh, in order to request assistance either from National Treasury and, and DCOC so that uh, the other than uh, the 20 billion, uh, that they would ensure that uh, revenue uh, and their plans are up in place so that they're able to reverse the decline in the revenue and so that when they get into June, indeed, the minister is seeing um, a recovery on their revenue. My last uh, short chair the mayor indicated in his presentation that uh, they have a serious challenge now where social distancing in the informal segments uh, during uh, this uh, level uh, uh, three regulation is uh, seriously undermined uh, what steps what steps the mayor and his executive are uh, uh, taking are uh, uh, employing to ensure that social distancing while on still level level three is being enforced and uh, where is the, the deployment of the defense force around those areas so that uh, the enforcement so that the actual municipal police and uh, the provincial police are actually the job are actually assisting and uh, reinforcing uh, to ensure that the uh, social distancing is actually applied to the letter. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Mfumza. Honorable So. Mm. Honorable So, can you unmute your mic? Unmute your sure. mic. Yes, proceed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Let me firstly take this opportunity to welcome the presentation by our executive mayor. But firstly, let me say that it was really difficult for me to be connected. And then uh, when he, he, he does say the presentation, I didn't hear much. That's why even the question that I'm going to ask. Maybe it's going to be one or two. But uh, I firstly thank you, Executive Mayor, for increasing the budget for the indigent. You are doing a good job. And then also, I also want to comment to you about the food bank for distributing to the indigent people. But uh, the question that in the, in the recent past, Salka indicated that there are revenue collection challenges in municipalities, and this impact on debt uh, level being high. Are you experiencing the same problems? What strategic contingency plan uh, do you have in place so that uh, you should be able to recover the re re revenue? I thank you for now because of I didn't hear most of the or uh, 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 your, your presentation, but uh, I can assure you, Executive Mayor, you are doing a good job in Ekorulen. I thank you. I suppose you also read the presentation because it was sent in advance, Honorable Go. Honorable Waters. Um, thank you, Chair. Chair, I'm going to keep my video off if that's okay because of the poor connection. I've got two oh, questions for the mayor. The first one's got challenge all over today. The poor connection issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I've I got... ask before you proceed, Honorable Waters? Uh, Honorable, Lo, can you mute your mic so that we can hear Honorable Waters properly? Uh, Honorable, Lo, mute your mic, please. Thank you. Proceed, Honorable Waters. Uh, thank you, Chair. I've got two questions for the Mayor. The first one's got to do with the um, declining revenue collection. Um, what measures is he putting in place with regards to the declining revenue collection, given that he wishes that white businesses would collapse? So what's he going to do to compensate the income from white businesses that he wishes to collapse to um, increase the uh, revenue collection for Ikuruleni so that services can still be provided. 
The second one's got to do with the food parcel distribution center and the fact that Ikurleni um, itself posted pictures of ANC councillors distributing food parcels from the food parcel center to Alia. And I want to know what the mayor is doing to ensure that the distribution on Yeah, honorable waters. Smith, did you hear me? Yeah, the last part, I don't think we captured it. Can you repeat the last part? Yeah, to do with the food parcel bank. The fact yes. that Ikuleni's social media division uploaded pictures of ANC councillors distributing food parcels wearing ANC regalia. And I want to know from the mayor, what's he going to be doing to ensure that the distribution of food parcels is done on a non-political basis and doesn't become political, given that, as he said, he's got all the donations from businesses who may or may not support the ANC. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Waters. Executive Mayor? So, on, on, Honorable Chair, my apology. Okay. Yeah, no, no. I, I think um, there, there's an issue that I, I wanted to address, but I, I don't know how it slept in my mind. And I think it will be an, uh, really unfortunate if, if we do not address it as a portfolio committee, because the rules of parliament are still applicable uh, uh, to us, despite us conducting our meeting uh, virtually. Chair, we are all entitled to our own opinion, but I don't think we're entitled to our own facts. I think I had find it discomforting and uncomfortable the comments made by Honorable Hussein referring to the mayor's comment as childish. We might differ from time to time with issues that we raise, but I don't think uh, we need to go as far as labeling uh, 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 people childish. We're entitled to our opinion. Uh, I, I can uh, uh, differ with you as much as I want, but I still need to maintain the level of respect. So I, I, I thought I should raise uh, uh, that matter. Mm. It cannot uh, uh, go unchallenged. Uh, uh, it, it's quite unfortunate, and I would really appeal to Honorable Hussein to withdraw uh, 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 labeling the, 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 the Honorable Mayor uh, uh, comment as childish. Let, let us not play the man and, and, and focus on playing the ball in dealing with challenges that are confronting the country. Thank you. Okay. Hey, IJ. Hi, Jefferson. Hi, Jay. Hey, proceed. 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 Yes, ma. I'm from the doctor. CC. Uh, my appointment was... I know. Uh, we got it. Proceed with your yeah. question. Yes. <laughs> no, Jay. Actually, mine is not a question. I want to concur what, what uh, Honorable... Uh, uh, Hadebe, he's, he's saying about the Honorable Hussein. Honorable Hussein cannot say that to our executive mayor. This man is working tirelessly at Eguruleni, looking after the, the city of Eguruleni, and he's, ma he's making sure that the people of Eguruleni are safety, are getting food, are, are, are healthy. So, how can you refer the, the mayor to the child? The one is presenting. It's not good. He must, the Honorable Hussein must withdraw these things. He must withdraw this comment. Thank you, Chair. Chair, point of order. Who's calling the point of order? Chair, it's Honorable Bergman. Yes. Chair, sorry, I'm a visitor to the committee, but I just I know the standing rules and it's. Uh, Although I'm not arguing what anyone is saying, as this, it's just the problem is the timing, is that we call the point of order as and when the actual infraction happens. So if Honourable Hurson had said something offensive, it should have been called as and when he had said it, and in which case then he should have been called to withdraw it as he said it. Unfortunately, he said it a long time ago. So to call for him to withdraw it now at the end of the meeting, you know, at the end of, of everyone else having given the input, okay. it's too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's and why chair, I, just, if, I, just, 
I think uh, Honorable Berkman has raised the issue, but I had thought the mayor will address that person when he respond. Uh, yeah. That's why I didn't even ask Honorable uh, Wilson to, because that's the matter that's directed to the executive mayor. And I believe the executive mayor has got the capacity to respond to everything that is said, has been said mm. to him. Without wasting time, and I hand over to you, executive mayor, you must address all the issues as raised and those things that are said on you. I know you've got that capacity to deal with the matters. Over to you, executive mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, and uh, to all the members of the committee. Uh, I appreciate the, the engagement. Um, I must say that uh, one would have expected uh, more on the substance of what we are presenting, uh, but uh, seemingly there is a temptation to personalize issues, and um, I'm grateful that some members recognize uh, that, that part. Now, <clears throat> Uh, Honorable Hosen, what I said, uh, which you can go and check on my tweet, and then you, you must then maybe, if you come back, you must tell me whether whether that amounts to what you are saying. Because I said in my tweet, and I wrote it myself, I said, uh, nationalize the commanding heights of the economy. If that is racist according to you, you must think again. And I think that it's, a, it's an unfair comment because you, I don't think you understood uh, the part. All what we saw, because uh, some people get excited by um, uh, by, uh, by headline, newspaper headlines. I had attached what uh, Member Malema had said uh, in a statement. I then qualified the specific thing where me and him agreed. And I am not going to take that back, because to nationalize uh, the, 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 the commanding heights of the economy is what we've been calling for over and over. That does not mean or is, is not reduced to disrupting white business and so on. And so I was not part to that conversation. And I, I challenge members and you, Chair, because this is on record, to go and check what, what is it that I said specifically when I said I agree with Malema. And then I qualify on areas where we, we, we agree on nationalizing the commanding heights of the economy. And we can have a, a debate about that. What do I mean? Which sectors? What is their focus? What is the policy basis? And I'll, I'll be able to articulate those. And um, I've been uh, in the meeting with my organization where we debated this thing for a long time. We'll issue a formal statement on our take uh, with regard to that matter because it can't be that we must be driven by the Daily Maverick. Um, they can't see the agenda for us. Uh, that we will refuse. So anything written by Daily Maverick is what is actually putting us on the corner trying to project us as people who are racist. I belong to the African National Congress, a non-racial organization. So I, I will never confuse my view. So when, when when we are debating on Twitter, there's just small thing. You say you say you say I did say myself about nationalizing the commanding heights of the economy and uh, I stand by that. And that does not amount to racism or or killing white business people and so on and so on. But white monopoly capital as a as a system is what need to address here uh, and, 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 and unfortunately that's the, that's the term we're using but I have never advocated for racism or killing of white business people and so on and so on because people who come to donate um, my own personal friends I've got lots of progressive white friends that I have but there are there are some few uh, white people who say things that are unimaginable if you look at the last incident of racism where a whole minister was depicted uh, to be a, a mango or anything like that. We are not talking about that. Instead, you choose to attack me because uh, I'm coming to do my responsibility to account to the company. I think it's unfair, uh, Honorable uh, Hussein. But uh, I, I challenge you to go and check what exactly I say so that you are on record here. You must be factual because I am not responsible. I will not say things that I do not understand. Um, hey, person, Honorable, in here. Honorable Brink, um, the the, the, the collapse of revenue is worrying to all of us. And I think that uh, we appreciate uh, the last pronouncement by the minister uh, when they say that it must affect credit control. And we know it's not going to be easy because there are many other variables here uh, that are at play. For instance, uh, if the airport is still closed, that's our client. If uh, a place like uh, Bedwood is still, the hotel is closed, it's, it becomes difficult to collect from those big clients. But uh, I think that uh, we, we are working on the on the on the on the on the relief 
mechanism. Uh, we, we are going to ensure that uh, we stabilize over time. That is why we are looking for other inter interventions. Now, with regard to, we had to go to council um, uh, last week to pass a special adjustment budget uh, to revise our CAPEX because of the real realization that um, it had become impossible, having lost almost 66 days uh, in construction. Uh, that's a lot. So we have revised our CAPEX and we believe that we, we are on track we should be able to report reasonable numbers, even though we would have aimed higher in terms of the in terms of the of, of the report. Now, we uh, in the important committee like this, we can only lobby that uh, we must make uh, resources available uh, to the municipalities, because if we acted otherwise during this time, it would have created more problems. I think that it is in our best common interest, all of us, to make sure that. Um, um, we devise strategies, including what we are going to present to council, and that's why I jumped to those pages, uh, which are measures that we, we are trying to, to put in, in place. Uh, Honorable uh, Openma, um, invariably because of COVID, many people are losing jobs, uh, so you'll have a number of people who register as indigent, and we have a responsibility as government to make sure that all of them are supported. We are the only metro that is paying over 4 billion rand towards the indigent program, different programs, to make sure that our people they are looked after and will continue to, to do that. The issue that you raise with regard to what will happen to the shelters is the issue we are discussing with the provincial government uh, so that there is a, a, we formulate a strategy that is sustainable. Because in a democratic country, there should be no street kids. People should be having shelters. So as government, we have a responsibility to really come up with a mechanism that is going to mitigate uh, this issue that, that we are raising. The, the criteria for the food bank is set out there in the document. I just jumped it because I took it that members um, uh, read it. But in the main, we, we have a list of indigent. We have the hotline where people can call and declare their status. Once they have done so, we have uh, our team of social workers and, uh, uh, who goes on the ground to do assessment before we can issue the food parcel. So it takes about it takes a bit of time. You'll find that I think on page, uh, uh, page, uh, what is page? Yeah. yeah. So so that, that, that whole criteria is stipulated there. We currently have over 50,000. 50, it's on page 10 of the document. So I just jumped that was, I took it that members had looked into the issue. But uh, that that is the criteria of, 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 of where we, we, we're going. Now, on the issue of vaccine, uh, at the, uh, when we had the State of the Cities address, I said the following words in this speech, um, and I think that will also answer the other colleague who, who asked the question. I said that uh, because COVID was before us, it is important for us to look at the global um, uh, developments. And then I said that if uh, we find a vaccine, a drug, or molecule, or whatever that can assist, including a drug that does exist uh, from Cuba, but also it is here in the country. The, the interferon alpha 2b was seen or praised to have worked in China. They were, they were using it in other countries and so on and so on. So it was a, a way of example. What did we do after that? We then, because uh, we don't just order medicine, ourselves, we order medicine via the, the provincial government. We then sent a request after our doctors had advised us that uh, this thing uh, uh, has been working in other areas, but it is not part of our normal stock in the clinic. So they outlined the process. Even there in the statement, we said we'll follow all due processes, including the medical control council, because at that time, uh, we knew that it was in the country, uh, uh, but we did not know of, of the procedures. So I said those things, and, and over time I've been verifying that I have never said there is a vaccine that exists anywhere. I said if, if it happens, because uh, look at us now, we are working online, uh, we've had uh, our first cancel online. We did not know at that point, because it was imminent, it was on the 18th of um, uh, March when I made that statement. I did not know at what point will the council convene again, so that if in between there is a drug or a vaccine or a molecule or whatever, uh, is found, we have to ensure that uh, we, we, we procure it in the interest of our people. The province has come back to us, uh, they are refusing, we will make a public statement so that our people can know uh, our stance, because we're not saying it because it's popularity, 
I know, as a matter of fact, uh, Honorable Chair, people are irritated by the word uh, Cuba in their, in their vocab. Cubans are our friends for a long time. Uh, it's, it's a nation that has been providing uh, humanitarian over time, and uh, I'm happy that um, last week uh, I also had an opportunity to welcome about eight doctors from Cuba who are going to work with us uh, to ensure that we, we manage the pandemic. As you already know, that we are a hotspot uh, in this regard. Uh, Honorable Katebe, um, the, 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 the conditions or the, the conditions of human settlements uh, are unbearable. Uh, I wish we could have a sustainable solution as a country to deal with informal in, informal settlement. You go to one shack that houses 10 families. It's, it's inhumane. It's difficult to manage social distance. But our processes of uh, 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 building of houses, of human settlement, uh, of giving people stands is what should assist us. The problem is the land uh, that, uh, that uh, that we need uh, currently is, 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 you know, will require us to, to really purchase a lot of land so that we can give our people uh, spaces to live. So the current conditions in the informal settlement uh, is really uh, unbearable. So our resources, we are trying everything possible with the police, uh, with the SM, with the um, uh, uh, SAPs. There is very limited deployment, uh, uh, at least in our area, of, of, the, of, the, of the police. So we've not seen them a lot, and I'm not sure whether it's an issue of capacity and so on and so on. But I hope that on the uh, on the story of the Daily Maverick, Daily Maverick, they have made me their special project. Uh, they insult me in every corner they turn, uh, including the story that uh, uh, Honorable uh, Hossein is talking about. They even included my tweet there and quoted something different differently. I am not Julius Malema. My name is Mzwande Lemasi. Julius said what he said. I said what I said. And there are certain things that he said that, that I agreed with. And I articulated those specific things where it was a, an agreement. The, the disaster management uh, grant, it will help us ease some of the areas because um, I think our team is working flat out, uh, the team of disaster. So we are hoping that um, uh, the, the copter will assist us with this, with this resource. Now, the, the discomfort, um, you know, when you are told you have failed a school, they tell you you got 49%, and then uh, you can either go and look for the results or query them and so on and so on. The problem with this formula, and I hope uh, uh, GM Dao can assist us, if you say five in every 100,000, um, and, then, and then we are talking to the population of uh, 3.8 million, I'm struggling to, so nobody has said, here is the formula that qualifies you. And I, I think this is the highest authority where I can ask, can you provide us with this formula so that we can understand whether or not we are a hotspot? Prior to the uh, announcement by the president, there was a report that indicated at that time we had uh, about 97 active cases uh, at that time. Uh, only Eberulin was was reflected as red, as a hotspot. But when the president announced, all other errors were included. So we 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 we've got to understand what is this formula that we are talking about. Uh, uh, Honourable Member Mpumza, um, the the process is on page ten, but we verify each and every person that we give, and we know that. There are people who have just lost jobs or have lost significant uh, income and so on and so on. So we don't, don't discriminate uh, either foreign national, every person who's here who's hungry, who meets the criteria, we make sure that uh, we're able to uh, to support. Um, the, 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 the food parcels, we try as much as possible to standardize them, uh, to balance the nutrition, and I'm quite confident that um, those who have received at least can attest to that, including uh, other political parties. <clears throat> the, the, the revenue decline is a reality. Uh, we've got to continue now with credit control uh, in order for us uh, to, to, to see the situation because sooner sooner or later we'll have no resources uh, because we pay upfront uh, ESCOM, we pay upfront rent water and all those things with the hope that money is going to come back uh, when people are paying for, for, for their services. Remember to 
Uh, thank you very much for observing the issues of the indigents and so on and so on. Uh, member uh, uh, Waters, uh, the decline in revenue is a, is a reality. I think that um, we have a responsibility, all of us as government, uh, to acknowledge that fact and to devise strategies without using race as a card because it perpetuates the stereotype that is out there. And I would really want to, to challenge you. I know that one of your members here um, has, has gone to the newspapers and said things about, about people distributing food. That, that particular MMC uh, has got an answer. And, and I can give you that answer because we had lost a councillor here in Ward 42. So the MMC and the speaker, they are in the funeral committee of the municipality. But at the same day, the executive mayor had called all the MMCs to come. So what the member did, she put a top of the municipality. But because that uh, honorable member is so intrusive, he was looking down on the women's breast to see the logo. There was no display of ANC logo. And in that issue, we are now taking it up to ethics because uh, it is meant to create an unnecessary tension. As a matter of fact, DA councillors have been given 1,500 food parcels to distribute. They too have been distributing. Whether they were wearing the DA t-shirts or not is neither here nor there because what we took as an approach is that our people are hungry. Let's make sure that we provide food for all our citizens. And that's, that's the issue here. I don't think that there is anything wrong uh, because you've got to look very, very closely uh, to arrive at a decision which now there is an ANC badge somewhere there, you know. So, so those are the issues that I, I would like to raise, Madam uh, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Chair, it's Mike Waters. Can I ask for that, please? Who else wants to ask follow-up questions? Hussein, uh, uh, Chair, two, please. Hussein. Honorable Hadebe. Bergman. Oh, sorry, my apologies. It's 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 waters. Adebe, Hussein, Bergman. Yeah. Yes. Okay. In that order. Um. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, uh, I honestly believe that the mayor has misled the committee on three fronts. If I didn't say that he's left, misled, they haven't changed the rules. The first one is on the picture of the councillor, the ANC councillor distributing uh, distributing parcels with the AC tune shirt on. The fact is, the honourable, the, the councillor that the mayor refers to wasn't at the uh, location where the food was being distributed. The picture taken was taken by a Nikuleni official and posted on the Facebook page of Nikuleni. It had nothing to do with the DA councillor. He wasn't looking down her breast. He's not a pervert. He's not a sexual predator. So he's doing his job in exposing the ANC, utilizing food parcels as a political weapon. So that's the first thing I want to say. And the mayor can go and check his own Facebook page if he doesn't believe me. The second one is to do with the article where the mayor supports Julius Malema. Now, the headline of the article says, let the white economy collapse, says Malema. Big English, what it means. The mayor starts his tweets by saying, I fully agree with my friend on this one. So if the mayor is trying to now backtrack and worm his way out of, out of being... Um, exposed as causing racial divisions with any cool lady, he's not going to get away with it this time. The fact is, uh, Mr. Mayor, you fully supported your friend, Julius Malema, on this article. And you even took a picture of the article and posted it with your tweet. So there's no ways you can say, oh, I only supported him on the nationalization of the commanding heights of the economy. You supported Says our friend, you did mislead the committee and parliament in that regard. Then on the, then on the Cuban um, vaccine, you said in your State of the City address, as part of our city's immediate contribution to curb coronavirus in our space, we have resolved to use our emergency fund. So resolved to use, you've done it already, you've taken that decision. 
resolved to use our emergency fund to procure the vaccine from Cuba. And you even name the vaccine Interferon B. So you have a name for it. You've taken the decision to go and buy it. Um, and yet now you're saying that you didn't do that. The fact of the matter is, as far as the regulations are concerned, you spread fake news about the vaccine and about the, the virus in itself. And you gave people a, um, uh, a, a, a perception that, that Ikuru Lady was going to get a vaccine that would solve all these problems. There is no vaccine. It's a myth. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine. I wish there was a vaccine, quite frankly. It would save a lot of problems, as we all know. But there isn't one. And the fact is, what you said in your State of the City address should have been checked. Uh, you should have your staff verify the facts before you say things. And you have misled the public and Parliament once again. Thank you, Chair. The next one is Honourable Hussain. Uh, Honorable Yeah, uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. I um, wanted to just deal with some of the, the comments and my colleague, uh, uh, Mike Walters, seemed to have covered some of it. But, uh, Chair, let me just say to you, I'm sorry that, you, that, that your committee meeting is taking a bit of a political twist, but uh, be that as it may, you know, uh, uh, the, the good uh, mayor is a controversial mayor in, uh, in the country, and... Uh, Unfortunately, the, uh, this conversation, because it's very much a current affairs matter, um, was going to dominate uh, the portfolio committee. But we, we, we take note of the of the good work that the, that the, the municipality is doing, and uh, and I think we must. I, I must be fair also, and we all must be fair. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to say the following to you: that when you support the poorest of the poor in our community and involved in the social relief measures that you've been involved in, we support you 100%. I mean, uh, Honorable uh, Waters have, has raised a, a separate issue, but, you know, on the broader principle of it, all of us in South Africa want to see that those who don't have food on their table, that there must be food on their table. And and your your contributions in that regard, we support you on it, and, we, and, and I want to congratulate you for that. Um, when you say that, that social distancing in informal communities is inhumane, we agree with you. Because it's not the same as those of us who are living in you know, uh, well-developed suburbs uh, because of the history of where we come from. And we understand that. And, and where you direct your effort in trying to make it as easy as possible for the poorest of the communities to be as safe as possible from the coronavirus, we support you on that. Where we also agree, and all of us in South Africa, regardless of which political party we come from, we all agree that the gap between the rich and poor in our country is not acceptable. And that the economy has to be in a direction that's going to help all South Africans. We all want the same thing. We might disagree on, on the mechanism to get there. But the principle we all agree in, on, and that's the spirit of our constitution, actually that all South Africans must come together to be able to build a country where all of us can prosper. And to some degree, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, when, when Nelson Mandela was elected as the president, we were moving in the right direction. And for a number of years, we continued in that direction. Where we go wrong is when there are comments by some politicians who seek to divide our society on the basis of race. And that is the point I'm trying to make in respect of the childish comments. You see, Honorable Mike Walters put it exactly the way it should be. Is that you have said that you fully agree with your colleague when he says that the white economy must collapse. Mr. Mayor, if that white economy collapses in your city, you will never be able to provide the social relief that you've been providing during this lockdown period. And your responsibility, sir, is to bring all South Africans together, regardless of whether they're black and white, to achieve that spirit in the constitution that we all, uh, that belongs to all of us. And that's the leadership that I'm asking that you provide. And so if you disagree with the comments that the white economy must collapse, yet you've said so on Twitter that you agree. And if you believe that the Daily Maverick or any South African has misinterpreted your comments, now's the opportunity for you to tell us whether you agree with the comment that the white economy must collapse and correct that and we move on. 
The last point, Chairperson, is uh, the the honourable uh, uh, the, the, the mayor is a clever and sharp politician. He can stand his ground. So I want to appeal to my colleagues on the portfolio committee that, uh, and you are right, Chairperson, give him the chance to be able to respond. And I'm afraid that I think the the point that, and the comment that I made earlier is that the support for the comments by Julius Malema that uh, the, the mayor had supported, I, I stand by that. I think it's childish because what we require from our leaders in our society is not to be supporting words and comments that seek to divide our society. Children do that. Adult politicians like you and I, we must seek to unite our country and not divide them on the basis of race. And anybody who sees to, see, seeks to do that, in my view, is childish. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Bergman. Thanks, Chair. It was just something that the executive mayor had said that resonates with me as well. That in terms of how we classify the spread of the of COVID-19, I think it's important that the committee of COCTA has a, a formula because, you know, something like in Cape Town, for instance, you know, people are seeing it as a hotspot and uh, the strategy to actually measure the, 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 the tracking of the actual infection rates is different in terms of that they're actually testing and chasing the, the disease. So where they, where they would actually find someone that's actually got it, they would then go and test people that have, they would go test the people around that person that has got it over other metros maybe that uh, are doing random testing. And uh, I think that the mayor's on to something when he says that there, there should be a standard and that everyone either stick to a standard or that there's a check, there's, there's almost a formula, you know, that there's a universal formula that we can use where, where it's benchmarking all the metros to a, to, a, to a fair benchmark so that when you call the Kuruleni or when you call the city of Cape Town as a hotspot, you can say with confidence this is why it's a hotspot and that they're measured accordingly. So I just wanted to make that statement. Thank you very much. Honorable Hadewe. No, thank you, Honorable Chair. I'd like to reiterate that we are indeed entitled, Chair, to our own opinion, but we are not entitled to our own facts. And I'd like to welcome the clarification and the explanation by the Honorable Mayor on the matter uh, that uh, seemed to be dominant in, 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 in this portfolio committee. But over and above his clarification, there's, we are still uh, help bent to uh, uh, deduce or arrive at our own facts. I'd like to appeal, Jay, that mm. le le let's take what uh, uh, he has clarified as the mm. facts, unless we want uh, uh, to force him to say something that we thought we, we, we had or understood as being said. Moving on, Chair, you see, per perhaps English, uh, 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 it's a, a very foreign or difficult language to comprehend. Because when you say child is to me, you're speaking of a, a teenager who's throwing, who's throwing tantrums, uh, as someone who is immature. Now, for you to refer to an, uh, an executive mayor of a metropolitan as someone who's childish, I, that does not sit comfortable with me. I'm not saying uh, uh, withdraw if you don't want to, but what I understood and interpreted the comment as having implication on is that the executive mayor of the city of Ekuruleni uh, uh, acted as a person who is a teenager who's, told, who's throwing tantrums, a person who is immature. And that I do not think or expect from an honorable member because uh, uh, he wouldn't want us to refer to his comment as being childish. But I'll, I'll let it slip, I'll let it slide if the member still insists that uh, there's no need for him to withdraw such. But honorable uh, uh, mayor, I'd like to get a clarity if I heard you correctly. The issue about the drug, yes, Cuba is and will continue to be our key progressive and our strategic ally. 
Now, when you said that uh, the province did not support you getting the drug uh, that you referred to, uh, did the province uh, articulate or explain the reasons for them not uh, supporting your, 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 your take as it was initially articulated in, 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 in your state of the city's address? Can I just get a clarity as to whether or not you were able to be given an explanation to why the province refused? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mpumza. Honorable Mpumza. Let's wait again. Honorable Mpumza. Let me skip him and go to Honorable Kleiser. Thank you very much, Chairperson uh, uh, of the Portfolio Committee. With respect to you and the members, I would like to tender my apologies uh, with regards to the, the, the network glitches that I have experienced today. Um, I, I, I heard someone speaking about my Commander-in-Chief there. I'm not going to uh, entertain that chair uh, because it's not time now. I'll let the commander in chief respond for himself. Uh, uh, in the presentation, chair, I didn't uh, see the readiness of the schools uh, in that presentation unless uh, I was looking elsewhere. I was not looking at this presentation. The readiness of schools. Can the mayor just, just uh, Clarify there. How many schools are ready for the reopening? How much sanitizers have you availed for each school? How often will the classes be dis disinfected? And in terms of masks, how many per school are you satisfied that the number that is available will cater for children? Uh, how will that? How will how will the schools? Uh, curb the group studying, uh, the, the infection of, uh, the, I mean, the spreading of, of the infection. Uh, how will you curb the group studying for assignments and homeworks for projects that are needed for, for, for the marks of students? How many schools that, that have pit toilets? And, and how is the safety guaranteed in those schools? Uh, how many digital uh, uh, thermometers per school? and the procurement uh, measures you followed to, to, to actually secure, uh, you know, the, the procurement process that was followed uh, in terms of that. Uh, the other thing, uh, Mayor, is, is the issue of uh, clarity on, on what 21 eviction at Delmos camp. Secondly, what what 43 any unscheduled power cuts can you give us clarity on that what 45 any un, unscheduled power cuts on the site on on don park, park park clinic sorry what 99 residents cannot wash hands as there is no water in the lindelani windmill park area no electricity in many parts of windmill park Department not responding effectively. Street lights are not functional. Others are on 24 hours, and others are never are never worked since installation. Energy departments doesn't respond efficiently. Food food security programs not running effecti effectively. Just give us clarity on that. I saw in your presentation that you also uh, have. Uh, a food bank, and you can uh, actually. I don't know if you have explained in your in your presentation. You can just if it's covered uh, by other members. Because I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, uh, I was I was late. Uh, what all all three schools in what 99 Wilmill Park and security and and secondary school, primary and secondary school, and Tula uh primary school. Uh, what 99, no cleaning of streets, no service delivery from Sasa to, re, to, to, res, to resolve grant dispute. What 29, 
only ANC card carrying members are given food parcels in what 21? What 20? The park behind pick and pay uh, in Sandalwood. They put a fence all over and written that uh, the sponsor is responsible for cleaning, cutting grass, etc. The park looks like a bush. No, no one is is maintaining it. Uh, we requested for submission, and I, yes, yes, that that that's the one. That's uh, the, the 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 last issue, chair, is the is the manner in which uh, those those schools, the the schools are must. Uh, how often uh, they, they, they should should they be uh, disinfected? Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. And once again, my apologies for being late. With respect to you, no, Chair, I, 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 who's raising the hand? Chair, it's Member Michelle Clark. Member Clark, if I could ask some questions, please, Chair. Questions, yes. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, if I could please just ask the mayor, um, the Jimson constituency is my constituency, and um, Ward 36, 39, 92, and 35 have had unbelievable rolling blackouts for the last couple of no, months. No, no, no. Honorable member, can I, can I ask you to stop it there because we are still going to deal with petitions, and that is the issue that is part of the agenda. We are currently dealing with the matters around COVID-19 response plan, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, okay. Chair. I, I was so not sent an invite to this meeting, so I didn't know where you were on the agenda. I apologize. That's the point, because this is meant for committee members, but I allowed you by virtue that you are a member of the committee. Uh, the person who sent the petitions they have been invited they are here but nevertheless i will allow you to speak when we deal with the matters for now can we focus okay. on the covid covid response uh, plans that the the, the city has uh, provided to us executive mayor i will again give you the right to respond on the issues that are raised but uh, with to advise you to also focus on the issue at the end because you know we are dealing here with with how the city has been responding to COVID-19. And I think the Executive Mayor joining what the other members have said, uh, the report that they have provided to us, it, it has details to say, to say that we also need to appreciate um, the good work that we've been doing. Uh, I see amongst all the reports that we've received thus far, this is one of the reports that also give detail and uh, explain all the issues as raised. Thus, we need to appreciate you for having done that also to respond within the short period of time. But like I've indicated earlier, uh, Executive Mayor, at your own right, you've got the right to respond to these issues as raised. But like also in line with what Honorable Becky Hadebe has said, uh, we need to also accept what you are saying, but I'll give you the right to respond. Safe to also say that colleagues are complete. Let's focus on the issue on the agenda of the day. These other matters that people want to raise, you know you've got the other platform that you can vent on, but I hand over to you, Honorable Executive Mayor, to respond on the issues that are said, also the issues that has to deal with your character. Then you respond to that, then come back to the matters at the end that we are dealing with. Over to you, Executive Mayor. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair, and let me again thank all the members of the committee. Um, um, except to say that on, on the matter of the councillor with the ANC regalia, the matter is before ethics. I would like to stop here. Uh, I have stated the sufficient fact, uh, and um, council processes will ensue. And I think that uh, I swear this matter will be best, uh, best ventilated. Now, the, uh, the, the the article that was attached, uh, it had a comment from me, which stated specifically that with regard to nationalizing the commanding heights of the economy, it's what must happen. That's what I said. Because if I agreed with the document entirely, in Twitter you have characters. You can't just type everything. Uh, I, I, I would have just I would have just uh, shared that article and said nothing. 
But the fact that I said I agree with him on this specific thing, I don't know why Member Waters wants to force me to his views because he, he has a problem with me, Honorable Chair. I know I'm before the public protector. He has taken me there on the same lies of the vaccine. And I think that uh, it's, a, it's a proper place where I'll be able to ventilate my side because I don't know the speech he's, he's having. Where does he get it? Because uh, the speech that was handed um, as a record, it's very clear that um, we're looking for anything that is possible and within the ambit of the law. Hence, I have now a response officially from government that says they can't, they can't, they, 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 they are not permitting us to get this medication. They state their reasons here, and I will, I will read the letter that, that we've received from, uh, from health. Um, so, so, I think that on the human issue, I, I talked about the vaccine, the drug, and molecule. I didn't talk about one thing. I said, and any other that you can find, including uh, the, 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 one that, the one that I have heard about from Cuba. I don't think that I must be persecuted for mentioning the word Cuba in, in, in the statement. Because it is very clear what I have said. Member Hussein, I respect your views, but I think that as an honorable member, you have a responsibility to at least uh, treat each other with, with respect. Because uh, imagine if I was to say, uh, call your names. It is uncalled for. This is a platform for us to, uh, to debate, to exchange views, and to state the, the, the sides of, of, our, of our story. And I have really attempted to, to do. I'm glad that you recognize that there is a gap between the rich and poor in the country. And something has got to give. The status quo cannot remain the same. That message is a message that has driven me to talk uh, uh, specifically about nationalizing the commanding heights of the economy. And that is a debate on its own, which we can take We can take up that debate, what do we mean, and so on and so on. I am here, we can be able to do that. Um, so, so, member Katebe, the, the province have just received a letter. Uh, so they say, uh, your letter dated 14 April 2020, under the above heading, and I hereby submit my response. Your request was considered and referred to Houghton Clinical Governance Advisory Committee, which is the te technical advisory committee to the HOD and MEC. Current evidence has identified interferon alpha 2B medicine as an experimental providing potential for further research to determine efficacy of the medicine in the treatment of COVID. The preliminary results were also compounded by the fact that 1A and 2B we use in combination with other drugs in the trial. Research should focus on using a 1A and 2B alone to determine the efficacy. Recommendation by the Ministerial Advisory Committee Work Team on the Pharmaceutical Management of COVID was also consulted and their, and their, recommend, their recommendation is that it should be used under an appropriate medical research study protocol. So that's what basically it says. The rest on the other page is just a small so that's the reason that that was given. And then member Kaiser, all the questions that you've asked with regard to the school, I think they, they, you, if you can share them with your colleague at uh, basic education, they will be able to provide was uh, it's the competence of the province uh, with regard to, to schools and what is happening there. I don't have all the stats. And then lastly, on all the service delivery issues, I would request you um, maybe to furnish us with those so that we can deal with them. Uh, um, in a way, because we deal with service delivery every day. The reality is that we are experiencing an aging infrastructure in our city, and that's what is, is at play here. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable Chair, Honorable Chairperson, are you still there? Honorable Chairperson. 
Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm. The, the Honorable Mayor has concluded. It has concluded. So I should think uh, these matters are ongoing in terms of the progress with regard to I want to thank you, Honorable Mayor, for the responses. What I wanted to say was that uh, this matters on the update on this COVID response the plans. It's a matter that is ongoing. And then we'll keep on calling you to come back to update us on the progress and the work that we're doing. Uh, Same say we want to appreciate this committee. Honorable yes. Chair. The, mm -hmm. I think there was an there was an issue of food person that that was not addressed in relation to because uh, uh, I don't want it not to be addressed in relation to mm -hmm. uh, what council has not uh, only giving ANC because uh, we, we don't want any negative uh, publicity and that is not addressed and if I had the mayor correctly are you saying uh, each ward was given 1,500 food parcel to, to distribute? And if that's the case, I'd like to commend you uh, as being pro progressive, as opposed to the city of Cape Town, who's giving uh, 30 food parcel to Kylie Chawad councillors. Thank you. To say that, I, uh, that's why I okay. said I was thanking the mayor, okay. honorable. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a, I'll be with you on this issue of food parcel. If you read the presentation as submitted by the executive mayor, there is a. It's just that my presentation is not numbered, but there's a slide that deal with pillar two, food security response, wherein the whole detail of the food bank application and this building process is outlined. This is how it's done and then uh, how these things are done. I think part of the oversight for members who are around that area will just go and these processes that are included. Honorable Teza? Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you Chair. Honorable you was calling me Yes, it's me, Chair. I, I, I do not think that is, is consistent. It's consistent what what uh, uh, Honorable Khate is saying because all these questions emanate as a result of of of, of uh, oversight and as a result of the out of 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 the constituencies. You know, so come to a committee with half cooked information and 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 just and just because these things, even in Pumalanga here where I am. They are prevalent here, so so I do not I, I do not have a a a a a, a wish to, to to wish hunt for the sake of it. These are the issues pertaining to the to the to the, to, to the constituents, and the mayor saying that he can answer the issues within his jurisdiction. It leaves a lot to be desired because we can't come to, to, to a meeting for the sake of, of not being answered and for the sake of just a, a publicity stance about, 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 about matters pertaining to, 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 to our people. Because it is our people at the center of this uh, particular thing, at the center of a capitalist society. It is, it, COVID-19 should teach society to collectively bring about solutions instead of individual uh, egoistic uh, 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 chances uh, and, and chance taking of, of opening uh, 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 the economy for the sake of the egoistic and individualistic uh, uh, wishes rather than the collective uh, 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 societal measures in place, which is what is bringing us here in the committee to actually see if there are measures in place in society. And if there are no measures in society, then we must find out a solution to sustainably uh, uh, bring about those measures so that uh, uh, the, the communities are safe against, against uh, the pandemics, the, 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 the looming pandemic, because this pandemic is not as a result of a self-made uh, issue. It, it, it's, a, it's a natural disaster. There are many other natural disasters in 1947 in Spanish Spanish uh, flu. They, they, there's many of them Could that I can. Can you hear Honorable or is only me? Is it audible? It was 1917 actually, not 19. Yes, we can. We can. Anyway. Hear, we can hear him. Audible. 
is still audible, Chair. Honorable members? Yes. The last part. Thank you, Ole. Thank you. It's come. Sorry for the year. It's 1917. <laughs> At least there was a 47, a 7. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Honorable Chair? Yes. No, my Chair, I think when I asked for the, the mayor to respond, I was in agreement with what Honorable Chair was point. raising. Yes, I was saying the, the mayor has uh, unfortunately not responded to the question of Honorable Chair. Okay. And then I added a rider whether or not. Uh, Okay. so that we, we are clear on issues, but I was not intending in any way to suppress the question of honorable class. And I was even urging the mayor to correct if there is a false narrative that food parcels are distributed along political lines. But the intention was not intended at all to suppress the, the, the honorable cases a, a, a point of clarity. Thank you. Yes, as I said, we are mindful of the provision on this presentation, but the executive mayor, can you deal with that? Executive mayor? Come closer to the mic. You are not audible. Five minutes. I need to change to another station because the network is bad here. I can't hear. The network is bad, ne? Mm. To another connection point. But we can hear you. It's just the volume of the gadget of Kulufelo. Can't you? Can't you ask her to add up the volume? Executive Mayor. I, I think he is trying to reconnect to another gadget. To another gadget? Yes. So what do we do in the meantime? Comfort break, two minutes? I, I would uh, I would second that, Chef, because I think the, the responses yeah. from him are, are critical. Comfort break, five minutes. Five minutes yeah. Comfort break. Thank you. Second. Don't fight a uh, fight like oh, that. Comfort break, five minutes as the executive mayor is connecting to get a better network connection. Thank you, Chair. I think colleagues, we must just admit today is just a bad day. Everybody, it's, it's a problem with the network alone. And Kaza has came out game blazing. Ah, you touched the network. Was yeah, no, something has touched the net. <laughs> I think, I think, I think the command and other issues touched the net with me. <laughs> and I like it as a referee to see this thing happening. <laughs> so far, Chen, you've been a good referee. <laughs> ah, yeah, Chen is very, Chen is, is amazing. Chen yes. can, can fast. Chair can facilitate. You, you, you. We need a workshop on the command uh, of the economy, Chair. Of the economy, yeah. I think yeah. if DM Tau is, is around, uh, he must... He's left. Uh, yes, apologize. Yes, yes, that, I would have proposed that he reconsider uh, uh, the workshop on the command and height of the economy. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Yes, apologize. We had to go to another meeting. DM Tao has gone to another meeting. All Madam, right. Madam, yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah, is uh, okay. Madam Chair is the city manager from Ekuruleni. May I, the mayor is just walking to my office. I want to okay. indicate that we appreciate the two minutes break. He'll be here very soon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to the best time I hear from a city manager who's a woman. Malibongo. Siabonga. Eh, Becky. But 
Why, why is the city manager well resourced uh, 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 more than the, 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 the mayor? <laughs> I should have answered that to a political <laughs> It's because we are highly paid. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, city manager, why are you resourced more than your political principles? <laughs> hey, you must answer that. Is the system's act? <laughs> is the you system's know, act that the empowers act. you to be more resourced than the principal? Yes, the system act must be reviewed. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> Please afford the afford the honorable mayor equal a, 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 a gigabyte so that he cannot be found one thing in future. Is it driving, honor uh, 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 city manager? Is he driving to your to your office? No, he's just walking. Oh, hence, okay. hence, I said I appreciate the the break. The break, yeah. Yeah. No, the, yeah. I also appreciate. By the way, Ekuruleni, it's my hometown. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm from Fort Loras, my Lula Park. Okay, you must visit us one day. No, no, no. I do from time to time. I'm, I'm, I'm well uh, aware of all the issues and challenges. But today oh. we are focusing, yeah, on, on, on the topic at hand. Kurulen is my hometown. Okay, the best city. Yeah, no, no. You guys are doing a, a, a good job under circumstances. Thank you. Uh, you must learn to, to, to run the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just go check where he is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he has just arrived. Can you settle? Someone on. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I had to change the connection to the next building. We were, we were joking in your absence. Well, 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 the city well, manager well, resourced more than yourself as a political principal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's resourced. I can't compete with her. Okay, proceed. Yeah. But before, before he proceeds, he must sanitize, sanitize that area. Uh, I've, I've done so. For your safety. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Chair. On a serious note, I will turn with our break. Yes. No, the, 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 the one issue I wanted to, to, to address, Chair, I was saying that coming to meetings like this, you normally prepare. Man, to... You should have started in that office, honestly. The way you are so audible now. <laughs> you never started where you are. You should have just started in that office. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. No, so the, 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 the questions asked by uh, uh, Member Keza, uh, I am not seeking to undermine him or anything. The point I'm raising is that in meetings like this, you prepare the input. I don't want to be accused of misleading the member because I don't have all the facts before me. What I know is that all what councillors at a particular point, regardless of political parties, did receive food. Uh, churches, uh, uh, different organizations, organized bodies, and so on and so on, who so have been distributing through different means over and above our social development distribution that has, has been occurring. The second thing is that the province is also uh, distributing food across here to a various number of people. The reality on the ground, uh, uh, Madam Chair, is that the demand is so huge that at any given time, for instance, to give you an example, uh, on that issue where uh, Member Mike Waters is, 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 is quoting a council, I had 
been doing it. I'm doing drives every Friday to deliver about 5,000 food parcels in different informal settlements. So when you arrive in one home, you find one shack housing 10 families. So it means you must leave 10 big food, food parcels that will last them a, a month and so on. Now, the reason why I can't give a direct answer here on the accusation is was I don't know. But what I know is that the ANC in the province that did direct all ANC councillors not to just work to identify the needs, not necessarily to distribute. And all of them have been complying. So I will not know because uh, a picture will come. I would have misled, uh, I would have misled um, the parliament. Now, all these other service delivery issues that uh, council, uh, uh, member Tesla has raised, I'm saying to them, it will be better if uh, uh, I've had them, so we'll do our own investigation and we'll be able to come back with a team. I do have a team from Energy. I would like to request uh, Mark Wilson to perhaps just talk about the, that issue of Jamestown box Boxback Challenge that, that has been raised in the meeting. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Executive Mayor, Mark Wilson will deal with this matter as we are to deal with the with the, uh, 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 the, 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 the petitions. I think it's part of the follow-up. Uh, remember, we you sent a team of MMC and Mark was part of the delegation in December 2019. We considered the, the petition, so it will be a progress uh, report as we deal with the petition because the issue of the residents of Jamestown, Boxburg, and, and, and all the, within the municipality, there's been a numerous a challenge a, of power cuts. So that's the matter that we'll deal with as a follow-up matter. So then, uh, like I was still saying, Executive Mayor, the work that you are doing on the response to COVID is a work in progress. Earlier in the morning, we saw the Minister of Transport uh, visiting the airport, as you have indicated, that that is one of your major contributors in your revenue collection. And then uh, now with these lockdowns, uh, that level three lockdowns that allows the octopod to operate, then I should think that would be also a sight of relief on your part when it comes to the issue, then the airport will start to pay for the services now that it's to be operational. Though it won't be fully operational, but I think on those aspects that they had to pay the bills, they will have to do that. I was trying to say that say, uh, we appreciate the work that you are doing in responding to this pandemic. And then time and again, uh, it's a work in progress. We'll still call you for a further update as we progress, should the need arise, as I've indicated earlier, that uh, your city has also been identified as a hotspot area. So we have interest as a committee, as the lead committee responsible for the disaster management, and we'll continue to also call you to come and update us on the progress. Then... Without wasting time, also given the time that we have been given by Parliament, we need to proceed now to the petitions. Uh, we'll start with the one that has been presented by Honorable Berkman. Honorable Berkman, can I just give you five minutes to present the matter so that we can give the city to respond to the issue as raised? Sure. Honorable Berkman? One, we'll one I've actually got good news on the one, the one with the public participation and legislative compliance in the housing development. Um, yes. We've actually reached agreement. And I, all I want to mention on that one is that uh, I think it's important, the principle, you know, the I think the underlying principle here was public participation, where they had a meeting and there was a 2,000 signatures in the petition. And the biggest problem here was the residents wanted to be heard and all they wanted were all they were asking for was public participation and instead of that the decision was bulldozed through council and i think the principle of having a consultation process and then listening to what the voice of the people and you know when we actually listen because there was media outrage there was um 
with these, these public participation meetings where the MMC was actually um, at the meeting present. But what subsequently happened was a steering committee was formed and they actually went into negotiations and they've now found consensus. And the latest is that on Monday, they will start the soil turning. And I think this is a good example of what can be reached if we all get together and we actually consult with each other. So on this, on this one, this is a good ending story. And I think this is one where we can all actually be proud. But as I say, the underlying principle here is that we actually have to start learning on public participation to listen to the public. So thanks very much on that one. If I may move on to Ward 37, Chair. Yeah, that, that's really good news that the matter was finally resolved. Uh, we appreciate this feedback, Honorable Bergman. Then you can proceed to the next one. Thank you, Chair. Chair, Ward 37, a little bit more serious. Um, Ward 37, there's an area known as Stand 1 of 1224, which is the 42nd Avenue. Uh, the officials in the Kurulani are well aware of this uh, stand. Unfortunately, it's not necessarily the officials of Akurileni's property. It actually falls under the Gauteng Department of Education. The problem is, is that this is like a hot potato. No one wants to hold it. Everyone wants to pass it on as quickly as possible. And uh, the problem is, is, if you go visit the area like I've done, you sit there with, uh, you, see these, you see these buildings on top of it, and then there's an informal settlement. And the informal settlement has... It houses, it houses different race groups in separated areas, unfortunately. But it, it seems to, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a, you know, sorry? Oh. So you've got, you, you've got these three race groups separated on this very same property next to a school. And the first concern comes from the school itself. The, there's, there's been incidences of where bricks have been thrown at learners. Learners have stood on sharp objects like broken beer bottles. Um, then it's not unusual for a person to approach a learner to ask for money. There's concern both ways. And I'm not saying it's just from the informal settlement. There's actually concern from the school people as well that they can pass on disease. This could have been also very likely in COVID. Uh, circumstances, but such as uh, cholera, uh, loss, that it could have come from the school, but then spread into the informal settlement communities. That because of the because of the closeness of the community and the proximity to the school, that we're talking about these sort of things spreading very quickly. A horrible thing that's developing is uh, prostitution, and the thing with the prostitution is that we're talking about young uh, boys and girls that are sent to the corners of the road. Um, and it's, again, all races um, and all ages. And the, the, the sad thing and the irony of this is that it's, if it's the, the, the grounds of the Gauteng Department of Education, there's a duty to protect our children. And any, you know, whether the children are at school or deserve to be at school, we should have this duty to protect our children. Now, what we're looking for here, and uh, the, the executive mayor spoke about this um, chemical toilets. The, to our knowledge, we don't, I have not seen any toilets in, in, in the area around uh, this place. Uh, definitely not chemical toilets at, at the least. But what we're looking for here from the citizens, it's not necessarily that we move. Um, it's not that it's an arsehole that you move in the community uh, per se. You, we're looking for a win-win situation. We're looking that we can relocate uh, all three um, groups of informal settlers and put, uh, you know, just help them into, into uh, some form of community center or in, into a community area um, for their benefit. And also, as I say, you know, just the school, that there's a great use of the building, that there's a training college. Uh, I know that we're short of teachers. I know that the teachers would want, we'd want to train our teachers, that the Gauteng Department could even make a school, a training school out of this. And I just think that there's better use for the area and there's a way we can create this win-win situation. So with that, I present this petition. Thank you.
Thank you, Honorable Bergman. Uh, Honorable Mayor, then we'll allow Kokta to also comment. Thank you, thank you, Madam, uh, Madam Chairperson. The, the, first, uh, the first item that, um, that has been resolved, I think we, we are in agreement. We, we provided on page 30 uh, of the document the facts before this, and um, we do acknowledge that the member um, um, uh, accede to the to the to the fact that consultations were done there is now there's an agreement in place we should be ready for short tenning and issues that were being raised there it was about the quality of housing um uh, that needed to be built they were building about 3687 units uh, in this area but i'm glad that this matter is now resolved on the second uh, uh, item on on page uh, 35, uh, I will investigate the, the the issue of the chemical toilets, uh, but in our view, all the informal settlements, the 119 that we know of, are being provided with uh, uh, chemical toilets in the main. And we are slowly now beginning to start a process of um, uh, ensuring an alternative uh, forms of sanitation in different areas. So we'll be working it out throughout. So I will investigate the area. I will not say with certainty that there are no toilets there if we know about this informal settlement. And all other issues, I think, they are as covered in page 35 of the document. Thank you, Madam, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The issues that also Honorable Berkman is raising may be with this uh, district development model that has been launched is going to be assisting a great deal because I should believe we should have also invited the Department of Education now for their response. But it's a matter that is ongoing. And then I, I, I'm just excited also by the commitment by the executive mayor to make sure that you lead that because after all, if it's a district development model, you are the champion to make sure that you ensure that there's a similar intergovernmental inter uh, relations on this matter. So can we agree as a way of way forward and principle that this matter is gonna be finally resolved, bringing together all the relevant stakeholders and yourself as the executive mayor, you'll champion this. And are there any other issues that a colleague want to raise in relation to these two petitions? But I don't believe with, with the first one, as Honorable Berkman has said, that the issue of public participation has been resolved. There will be issues. Colleagues, can I see show of hands? Uh, on, Honorable Hadebe, Chair. Honorable Hadebe. We are still uh -huh. going to follow up on that issue by the that was raised by Honorable Waters. And can we focus on the first two? then we'll be able to deal with the other one that was raised with regard to the powers. Yes. I, I, wanted, I wanted to second your proposal that at least we need to get all parties uh, concerned to, to, to be involved, because I wanted to also ask in relation to the Department of, of Education, uh, what, what, what was their take on, on the matter? Have, have they been consulted? So in essence, I'm in support of your proposal to have all parties concerned so that we, we get the, the full uh, uh, story. In fact, what we're proposing, say the, may, the executive mayor would lead this process then moving forward and give us feedback on what agreements have been reached in resolving the matter. Agreed, agreed, Chair. Yes, okay. Agreed, Chair. Agreed. Agreed, Chair. Mara Chair, I'm not feeling worthy. Yeah, so, but, yeah. I, I, I think from our side, we can then, if possible, I'm not trying to uh, micromanage uh, <laughs> the, the, the work of the Honorable Executive Mayor. If perhaps you can give a, a time frame as to at what point are we expecting feedback 
uh, in, in relation to progress made so that at least we know uh, at some point we are going to be given a, a response. Hey, we are one eleven bank up Honorable Mam Kise. Mam Kise. Can you switch off your mic, please? Okay, ma. Mute your mic. Yes, I'm muting okay. because I, I'm drinking. Mute your, your mic, mic, Honorable Mkize. We are in a meeting. Mam Kise. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Can you mute it? I'm trying, Chay. Honorable Mkize, Brink. Honorable Brink. Yes, Chair. You wanted to say something. I see your mic is on as well. Uh, no, Chair. Not not on this item, um, but uh, on the on the next one dealing with electricity. Okay, uh, it's chair. fine. Let, let, let's wrap it up. I'm sorry by the, for the disruption by Honorable uh, Pretty Clava that side. I was trying to say this. Uh, I got disrupted to say then with in line with the time frame, we know the mayor. You are going to delegate uh, the officials. Maybe in two weeks' time, if that can be conveyed as in, in writing, because I think what is very key and critical is the the commitment now by the Department of Education on this matter, because the property seems to belong to them, and then also Cocta provincially will facilitate that to assist a, the executive mayor. But we understand in line with the district development model, we'll try to see it working here. The executive mayor will coordinate that. Is it fair enough to give you two weeks just to update us on the progress? But we know it's an ongoing matter that we look at that. And then Honorable Bergman will continue to update with us as a committee if there's any uh, uh, matter that needs our attention. Is it fair enough to you, Executive May? We know you are very busy with the COVID matter. Two weeks time from now? Yes, yes, yes that's fair. That's fair. Yes. So we are closing it on that note. The other matter that we are dealing with, uh, as I've said earlier, we dealt with this matter in early in December when we met with some of the officials from the uh, metro, including the MMC that was delegated to deal with this issue. Uh, maybe an update on the progress and then also to say now, what is the status quo in relation to uh, uh, the, 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 now that also ESCOM had stopped load shedding as well. Now, what is the, since December coming now with all those commitments uh, that the team made, uh, the power outage is now in a uh, Jamestown, Boxberg, and any other area surrounding a Kurilani municipality. What is the update on the petition and the resolution that we took last time in the committee? There was honorable, uh, my apology, she, she, she raised her hand in the other meeting. I'm trying to get her name again. Can she assist me with due respect? Thank you, Chairperson. It's Honorable Michelle Clark. Yeah, Honorable Clark. I've noted her. And then there is Honorable Brink, who else wants to talk on the matter? Definitely Honorable Waters should give us feedback. Yeah. Yes, um, Chair, if you don't mind, sorry, it's, it's Honorable Waters here. I couldn't yeah. open any of my attachments sent to me by the um, committee secretary. So I actually mm. have no idea which of my petitions are before the committee today. Is there any way someone could just briefly describe which petitions are before? The petition, the, we are the petition mm. that we are dealing with you, Honorable uh, Waters, is the one of the residents of Jamestown, uh, Boxback, Ekuruleni, in Ekuruleni municipalities, where you called us to investigate the numerous power outages. In particular, it was the Glen, Glen Murray substation that had challenges on these matters. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay, Chair, the Glimmer issue is separate to the petition that's before the committee, though. That's two separate issues. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
okay. These okay. are the other yeah. issues. Yes, um, Glimmer is in Kimpton Park, just so you know geographically, and the mm. petition pertained to Boxburg and Germiston power outages. Yeah. Mm. So let's deal with the current one. We have done with the Glenmar race. So are you ready to give us a summarized version on this one for Germiston and Boxburg and the other? Yes, yes? Yes, yes, I can. I, I sure. think, thank you. Thank you, Chair Ken, and I'm sure Honourable Clark and Honourable um, Silius would also like to come in. They've both been very involved in the issue. But just oh. briefly, Chair, is that um, the residents of um, Germiston and Boxburg have experienced uh, numerous, uh, numerous uh, electricity outages, which last, and I don't, I'm not talking about a couple of hours, some last for five days, right? It means their food rots. Hey. It means it, they are now um, and, here. Hello. Let me go Can to you hear me? Okay. Whoever's speaking. Um, it means that the food rots. Sure. Honourable Waters, can I talk to this member for the last time? Yes, please. Mom? Okay. Mom Kize. Uh, Shirin or oh, oh, Angela, can you call Mom Kize to switch off your mic? To mute your mic, please. I'm so sorry about that. Eh? It's okay. okay let's All right. Sure. right. Thank you. So residents have to uh, face days without electricity. As I said, the food rots, which costs them thousands of rands to replace, and many people cannot afford that. Um, it also affects businesses in the area. I'm sure Honorable Clark will talk to that about Wadeville. It's a massive employment area. And if there's no electricity, it means people uh, production stops in many factories. And therefore, people cannot work, and it affects businesses and their income. Um, I would also like to raise the fact, and maybe the officials can talk to it, is that I am deeply concerned with the Glimmerer issue and also with the boxburg germison issue, that Ikurileni is transgressing its license agreement with NERSA. I do not believe they are adhering to, to their license agreement and that they, uh, that they actually have failed to maintain standards throughout the metro in this regard. And I'd like to get some indication from the officials as to which aspect of their license they have actually failed in uh, maintaining. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Honourable Clark. Thank you, Chairperson, for giving me the opportunity to speak at your meeting today. Um, just in terms of what Honourable Waters has raised, um, last year, during November, we met with several business owners within Wadeville, Ward 39, because of the severe power outages they experience um, in terms of the effect it has on their businesses. Now, in particularly, I think Ekurileni has made some concerted effort in order to deal with bulk, big bulk businesses. But in many retrospect, in that area, there are many, many SMMEs that are severely affected and um, are still struggling in terms of their power supply. Then um, during the lockdown period in the last couple of weeks in Ward 36, 39, 92 and 35 in Germiston, and I have sent a whole um, uh, detailed letter to um, the city manager of Ekoreleni uh, around the areas that have been out and have been out for more than five days on a trot. Um, I, I can mention all the areas, it's Dalville, Witchwood, Testonville, Dinwiddie, Ellsberg, Primrose East, Elansfontein, Galway, Hazeldean, Germiston South, Dawnview, Le Leonday, Pumala, Buchley Park, Weber, Park Hill Gardens, that have had unbelievable outages in the last couple of weeks, up to five days on a trot. And, you know, during, during this lockdown period, a chairperson, many people are not earning an income at all. So, you know, they're under severe financial constraints as it is already um, being in the position we are at the moment and, and for residents to lose all their food in that during these day during the lockdown down period puts even more financial strain on people. So I would very much like the intervention of the mayor and um, uh, as I said, I have sent, um, I am in contact with um, the CM on a regular basis, and I have emailed all this through to her once again um, on Monday. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Clark. 
Honorable Brick. Um, Chair, if if you'd excuse me, it seems that my internet connection is not very stable, so I'm not going to put the audio on. Um, okay. Just as a as as someone who's not from Ekoruleni, um, I just need to underscore the point that there seems to be a particular problem with the the fragility of the electricity network in that city. There has been many complaints, not only from these MPs but from businesses um, in the area that I have spoken to, and we know that it it is a countrywide problem that our electricity infrastructure is old. There hasn't been sufficient investment in repairs and maintenance and capital replacement. That's a theme everywhere. But it seems to be that in Ekuruleni, it is affecting businesses severely in particular. Um, now, it's, it's not just that we have to care about businesses, but if your electricity infrastructure is failing your economic and industrial heartland, it's an issue of serious concern. And, and uh, you know... We have to look at whether the city is is uh, is is fulfilling its license conditions from NERSA, because those conditions for a distributor says that you have to keep the electricity on, you have to maintain the network for X number of hours, and you have to have data on hand. And and I think what is really needed is a coherent plan from Ikuruleni to say we have a problem. This is the extent of the problem, and this is the plan of how we will address it, including capital spending or repairs and maintenance, or specific interventions, or getting in expertise that, that they don't have. Um, and, I, and I think that that's just what we need. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Brink. Honorable Executive Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Chair, can I request a... Uh, uh, Mr. Mark Wilson to respond. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Mark Wilson. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, members and executive mayor. Uh, I can give a feedback on the progress or I can just answer the questions that are currently on the table, Madam Chair. Um, but in Let's answering... Answer the questions and then give the feedback. Okay, in terms of, of license conditions, the license conditions measures various conditions of quality of power under the regulation NRS 048 and NRS 047. That's your national specification on quality and of supply and quality of service, which is audited by the national regulator. So our performance is within specs and it is and and apart from pockets of trouble areas, we are no worse. We actually perform better than 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 most or well, all other cities in Gauteng if you look at the figures. But we do have pockets of trouble, which are the the, the main pockets of, of troublesome areas, which is mentioned in the petition. So currently, we are managing to keep within the licensing conditions and and Nas, the national regulators. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Sorry. Wilson, yes. Can we see your face if it's possible? Uh, my video is on, Chairperson. I'm not sure where I can see it, but I don't know. What, I don't know how to switch, but I have got my video camera on because I can see it on my screen, Chairperson. Okay. So I'm not sure how to come up there. So, mm. uh, yes, we, the national regulator soon points out where we do have issues and we try and rectify. In terms of the, the members, when they mention Wadeville as a big industrial area plus the suburbs around it and smaller businesses, Wadeville... We must understand Germiston is our biggest network and probably one of the old, if the oldest networks in, in the country and definitely the oldest network in Gauteng. So we have been spending a lot of money uh, upgrading over time. Uh, so, for example, the Germiston North substation, a massive substation, is 90% complete. That will assist in stability. The specific wave of problem, there's, there are very, very old uh, 33 kV cables there, which we have replaced uh, uh, most of them, and we're going to replace another 9,000 meters in the current the coming financial year, which is uh, starting in July. So Wadeville, we even had, um, uh, during the, the, the full lockdown, we had a special project. Uh, that was in April, where we put another new cable in there, which will help with stability in the Wadeville area and obviously the surrounding uh, 
uh, uh, smaller areas as well. Where we do have a challenge, especially now in the, in the areas that were mentioned where people have been uh, continuing without power, even though we never had a continual, we didn't have long continual power outages. We had daily power outages in the same time. Now, this has been happening uh, every winter as you get into the cold spell. So you start having these outages. Now, when you analyze the outages, the biggest problem we have is illegal connections and bypass meters. And now bypass meters are not just feeding one house. They're also feeding normally some, some uh, uh, dwellings in the backyard of those houses as well. So we start getting winter trips on overload every time we get a cold spell. And every single night, normally starts at between 5 to about 10 o'clock, we start getting these power failures due to overloads. It is also then made worse in terms of uh, when the trip's out, custom, the, the, the people that have been bypassed and doing illegal connections, they take our fuses out of our mini subs and then they hardwire that with wire. So then instead of just tripping that mini sub, what then happens, the main substation trips and you get a far larger area. So what we've uh, since we've had lockdown because we've found that the Firstly, in April and, and May, we weren't allowed to do uh, illegal connection. We, uh, credit control was effectively not allowed until now again. So we found a massive upturn because we can understand people don't have money. So there's a massive upturn in illegal connections and, and bypass, which made the problem worse. What we're trying to do in this temporary times uh, is do rotational load shedding. I think City Power also announced for Janus, we have to do that in, this, in, in problem areas. So we are trying to do that in terms of the, the areas mentioned, like Bushley Park, uh, uh, those type of areas. So that is what we uh, are, are doing now. What we're doing in the medium term is that we get from the next financial year in July, we, we've, mani we've, we've actually allocated far more money in terms of doing the meter bypass programs where we remove bypasses and we install meters in protective structures. So for the coming budget, there's far more allocated to that because that has become a winter problem in these areas. In the main areas that were mentioned around Germis, and that is the problem. In terms of general fragility of the network, yes, Ekurelenis network is one of the older networks, but we have managed in conjunction with national regulator, we have managed to allocate a lot of funding in terms of refurbishment. So if you look at the the the, the, the city we and you and you eliminate the problem areas where we're still spending money to get them up to scratch. We have other areas that, are, that a lot of money have been spent on old networks and it's very stable. So in the, uh, we are spending on refurbishment. And when we mean refurbishment, it's opposed to normal maintenance. Refurbishment is when you renew, you put in new equipment to replace old uh, past its sell by date equipment. So in the, we are spending close to a billion rand a year. And we've been doing that for the last 10 years. Uh, as we do it. So the average age of the network has reduced. When we when the city started as a metro, the average age of our, of our network was exceeding 45 years of all equipment. We brought that down to below 35 years, and we want to get it to below 25 years in another few years. So that will assist in the general areas. So Germison being the main problem, we are spending the most money now and in the future years. And one of the things we're going to address again is, is meter bypasses as said. Thanks, Chairperson. That's fair enough. Did you, you were dealing with Jameson, the progress report on Kempton Park? Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? Can you, yes, can you hear me now, Chairperson? Yes. Uh, we prepared specifically in Germison and Boxburg, but but Kempton Park, the, the, the Glen Marais substation was renewed. We ran a few teething problems. That's ba basically it's running smoothly now. The Van Riebeck yeah. substation, since we spoke, has been completed. It's renewed. Uh, we have installed the – we were talking about the early warning systems and CCTVs. That has been installed. So yeah. – we haven't had major issues in the last, say, two or three months. It seems we're getting to stability in, in the Kempton Park area, Chairperson. Okay. Members, 
that those are the responses and feedback with sure. regards to the two matters. Mm. Can I see people who want to follow up on issues as raised, as responded to? Is who's calling me is Brink? Um, who else? I see waters. Honorable Brink. Honorable yes, Waters. And who else? Me as well, please, Chair. Honorable Clark. Okay. Thank you. So sure. In that order, and Honorable Chair, Brink. And Honorable Hadewe Chair is the last speaker. Oh, Hadewe is the last speaker. Okay. Uh, Honorable, thanks, Chair. Honorable Brink. Thank you, Chair. Um, so a lot of technical information has been given and assurances, but let me just get to the nub of the issue. Um, 383 outages in Wadeville, the large industrial area, between July 2019 and February 2020. 383 electricity outages. Um, my very simple follow-up question to Mr. Wilson is, when can that community expect for their electricity supply to be stabilized? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Brink. Honorable Waters. Thank you, Chair. Uh, two questions to Mr. Wilson. Given the reduction in revenue collection uh, for the Metro and and the likelihood that it will continue for several months given the economic downturn, what effect will that have on the budget for the electricity uh, department? Do you have any indication and how will that will affect the upgrading of infrastructure generally throughout the Kuruleni? Then just on um, the Glenmore issue, Chair, and I'm, um, I want to thank you once again for bringing it before the committee. I really do. You you one of the few chairs that actually deals with petitions. So thank you very much. Um, I was given a, a, um, a schedule of repairs that needed to be done in the Kimpton Park area. I'm not supposed to have it, but I have it. And uh, what, what is quite clear is that if the general repairs had been done, the residents of uh, Glenmore would not have been uh, without electricity for six days. And I would just like to um, expand on that. There's a big um, substation called Spartan in um, Kempton Park, which feeds um, the uh, industrial area mainly. And that then links to the Van Liebeck Park substation. And if the cable between the Spartan and the Van Liebeck Park substations had indeed been fixed, um, from when that cable was broken on the 31st of July 2018 and still hasn't been fixed, Chair, nearly two years later, by the way, um, then the Van Riebeck Park substation would have been able to have uh, fed the Glenmore area and given residents electricity for the six days that they did not have electricity. And I'd like to know from Mr. Wilson and the Mayor, why is it that certain cables have not been repaired for years? And does he accept the fact that if this cable had been indeed repaired between the Spartan and the Fenrebeck Park substations, the Glenmore residents would not have been without electricity for six days? Thank you very much. Honorable Clark. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I, I would like to request that we get a progress report on what Mr. Wilson has tabled at the meeting today in terms of the repairs, in terms of the budget that's been allocated and areas that are going to be upgraded so that we have a schedule with time frames and the amounts that are being spended in the areas so that we can communicate this to, res to angered residents that this is happening and so that um, councillors themselves are also um, informed exactly how the process is going to follow and um, how the operational needs are going to be attended to. Thank you, Chair. That's fair enough. Honorable Hadeva. Th th thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, 
I, I welcome the response uh, from Mr. Wilson, but Chair, I, I always maintain uh, uh, the view that it's uh, always cheaper and, and better to maintain than to repair. It is also uh, better to repair than to replace because it's inconveniencing and expensive uh, uh, to, to, to replace. I'd like to get a, a, a sense uh, from Mr. Wilson because uh, the, the, the technical responses and explanation that he has given to us um, um, are, are well uh, received. In terms of their communication to the uh, public out there and members of the community, because certain issues and matters ought not to have uh, uh, been elevated to this level if issues of communication were dealt with efficiently, so that uh, uh, all parties concerned are informed and are well aware of what are the challenges. I mean, the number of outages that um, are reported in this committee, particularly in, in, in Wardville, more than 300 are concerning chair. So, uh, 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 but all that said and done, when you communicate with your residences and, and communities and give feedback on a regular basis on what are the issues and, and challenging, it gives them sense of comfort knowing that things are attended to. I know very well, I, I'm coming from a guru lane, Che. You would know that <laughs> home is for slurrers in, in my Lula Park. So I understand the challenges around that area, particularly with, with uh, power outages. Uh, the previous uh, uh, holidays in December, um, I also experienced some of, 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 of these challenges. So I'm, I'm well aware of, of the challenges within that uh, vicinity. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you will respond to the issues of race and then Executive Mayor, you will sum it up in also closing. Then I will then be heading towards the closure of the meeting. But there's been proposed way forward, me, Mr. Wilson. And over to you. Thank, thank you, yeah. Madam Chairperson. Starting with the 383 outages in Wadeville, is when you, when you count outages, you know, it's not necessarily the whole area. It could be one house, one business, one everything. So, yes, Wadeville was a problem. The Wadeville has had a lot of money injected into it already uh, in terms of cables. The next program on the table will be a, will be a total renewal of the, of the Wadeville substation, which does not just feed Wadeville. It's also the surrounding uh, uh, residential and smaller business areas. Number two, reduction in revenue collection. We did experience, you heard on the first report, there is a reduction brought along uh, about by the, the lockdown and the COVID-19 uh, virus. So the budget has been looked at and, and, and with the assistance of the executive mayor, the city manager, council and the CFO, is that at this point in time, essential service delivery departments like us and water will not have severe reductions in terms of the operational and maintenance requirements. Uh, so at this point in time, with the current budget, we still seem to we still keep in that money because obviously we have to protect uh, business and residents in terms of being able to supply. So there are some cuts in 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 in, in uh, some capital projects and slowing down in terms of rolling out. But in terms of the refurbishment maintenance, uh, at the moment we have got the funding still on the budget. Uh, in terms of a cable missing and not being repaired between Spartan and Van Riebeck Park, I honestly have not got it in my knowledge, and uh, I will have to look. I will have to look into that detail. But if you look at our, our maintenance program and our plan, our managed maintenance system, I will follow up. Generally, we do not leave cables unrepaired. The only time that I've left, we've left cables, and I can give you examples. I know a few offhand is we had one cable that used to run through uh, wetlands in the south of Germiston that because it was, you couldn't protect it easily, it kept on getting stolen. So we made a new route and what was left over of that cable was never repaired and it was left. So I can't I can't answer that straight out, but I can research it and we can then give an answer to, to member Waters. Uh, we will provide the progress report and program. The, the, this thing is available in terms of the timeframes of what's happening in Germiston and Wadeville. 
and other areas, but specifically Germiston, for example, three new substations are, are designs being done and we're going to bring them on, uh, uh, go out and contract in the coming year. Um, so that we will be able to provide. And then repair versus replace and maintain is that in electrical equipment, yes, you have to have a certain maintenance program where certain things have to be maintained within six months, within a year. Same as a car, there's certain maintenance schedules which we follow in terms of our planned maintenance system. But once you get to a certain age of equipment, you have to then totally refurbish or replace it. And that's where we concentrate on a lot of our efforts. Uh, when we started this metro, we had something, some equipment that came off the boat and was installed just after World War II. And it was still here in 2005. So, yes, that thing you can't really maintain effectively. So, if you look at our maintenance, if you look for this coming financial year, and I remember the figures, on maintenance, which is your normal day-to-day -day maintenance, we've got about $760 million. And on refurbishment, which is replacement of past sell-by date old, old equipment, we've got about a billion still on the budget. Thanks, Chairperson. comes in with the Glen Marais uh, uh, issues. Last time, with regard to the issue of the cable theft, you, you, you reported to us that mainly that job was in-house, in and then you have put in a mechanism to cap this and put some system in place, which the employees uh, won't know about it. Have you seen a reduction in this theft that it was also that orchestrated in house? And then the other issue is about your community awareness program on cable thefts. Did you implement it and then what has been the outcome? Mr. Wilson? Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair. Yes, we mentioned we're going to roll out some of this equipment, early warning equipment that you can detect cable theft before it happens. We did start rolling this equipment out. We are carrying on. Unfortunately, it's not cheap equipment, so we started rolling out in hotspots. Mm. Uh, with, within, within days of us uh, rolling out, we did arrest, and we have had a number of convictions and arrests. So we've also seen a positive outcome is that we have managed to stop cable theft before they damage the cable. Um, what we have found, though, is when you install in one area, people move the hotspot. So we're always playing catch up, but there has been a small reduction already. It is not fully rolled out. This will take us a number of years to fully roll out where we need everywhere. But we have seen that. Uh, I, I can't tell offhand, but there were two officials that were I haven't got the exact stats, but there were two officials that were that were arrested for for cable theft. Uh, I haven't got the status of their case where where, where it is now. Uh, we have been arresting, and, and the amount of arrests and investigations has gone up, and we are busy. We've even had some successful convictions since then as well, which is new. In terms of communication, uh, we are planning a new program in. In relation to us wanting to roll out a more a bigger program on uh, meter bypassing, because meter bypassing calls trips for everybody gets affected. So we in in our program in the coming financial year from July, where we're going to try and do more replacement of meters and put them in protective boxes. Together with that, we want to up our communication and education awareness program with customers to say, now don't go and break the box again because it can affect everybody, and also, we, we're trying to give them an energy efficiency. Uh, we, we've, we've developed a little pamphlets on energy efficiency that people can understand how to use it more efficient that they don't need to bypass. Uh, the other thing that I didn't mention is that, yes, uh, in an overnight, if, a, if you have a major failure tonight, the biggest challenge is effective and quick communication. So we have been allocated a permanent person assistance from our communication department. And the other thing we do straight away is we try and create a, 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 a WhatsApp group of the affected area straight away with, where we try and get any big business and any ward council on that group straight away. So, for example, we have got a Wadeville WhatsApp group where if something happens, 
positive or negative, we, we respond immediately. So we're going to try, we're trying that methodology more. Uh, but communication is probably one of the yeah. bigger challenges. And because as people get informed better, they can understand better what is happening. Thanks, Chairperson. Okay. Thank you, Executive Mayor. Uh, the other issues that you feel they were not uh, captured by Mr. Wilson and also your concluding remarks? No, th thank you very much, Chair, and uh, to the committee. Uh, we appreciate the engagement um, and we continue on our side doing everything possible to make sure that the system is functional. And I think um, I must commend my team because we're dealing with an uh, aging infrastructure. Uh, within the limited uh, budgets, and we are doing our best to make sure that uh, we, we we renew our infrastructure, not just in energy, also in water. We're having a, a massive program to try and fix our water infrastructure, and it's not easy because it requires a, a lot of money which we don't have. Uh, whereas with the declining revenue, I think there are challenges. And I think that uh, Mark uh, was uh, succinct in answering the questions. Uh, because if you report 383 cases in one place, it's a crisis. But if, if, if it's different houses or different times and so on and so on, as explained, uh, it, it gives you a sense that uh, uh, sometimes as politicians, we like over-exaggerating over things we don't know about. And it's important that we, we put information into context. Hence, we will always rely on our officials uh, Mark has been in the system for over uh, 18 years in the energy space. He has really helped us to uh, uh, to manage the space and to understand the network, uh, but also to advise us on key areas where we must urgently intervene. Hence, the issue of um, uh, Glen Murray, the, the Boxback, uh, Jamestown issue, they have been flagged. And uh, I'm happy that we are now 90% with the work. And I hope that we'll soon be commissioning those uh, substations so that we stabilize the infrastructure in, 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 the, in the area. And the most important point that uh, he has raised is that um, the, the, the license conditions are not being breached. Because uh, I know normally after meetings like this, people come with uh, exaggerated statements uh, about, uh, about certain things. At least we've said it in record uh, in terms of what is happening with regard to, to, to the area. And I, I would like to request um, uh, Member Waters to indicate this area where there was no electricity for six days, because we try everything possible uh, to, uh, to react to the situation. So I, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be interested to know what is that area so that we can ensure that it doesn't occur again, if indeed uh, there was an error without electricity for six, six days. Thank you, Madam Chair. Honorable Waters, are you able to give the name of the area so that we dispose? Yes, yes, Chair, of course. It's, yes. It's, it's to do with the Glenmore substation fire. The oh, uh, residents didn't have electricity for six days. We, we had the petition before the committee a few months ago, if you remember. Um, yes. Mr. Wilson can confirm that. And yes. I raised the issue of the fact that the cable, the, the, they could have provided electricity, um, to the residents of Glenmore if they had fixed the cable between Spartan and the Van Riebeck Park substations, which should have been replaced, uh, fixed on the 31st of July, 2018. So it's two years ago, basically. Okay, it would take a few days. So it was six days. People lost tremendous amount of food. It, 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 they had to throw rotten food away. They still haven't received any um, compensation from the metro with their food that was uh, had to discard. Thank you. But then, Chair, yes. Chairperson. Okay. Yes. Um, the, I think um, uh, Member Waters is 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 disingenuous here because there was a problem of a sub that bent down. It yeah. took. We replaced it, and and uh, Mr. Wilson has just explained now that. The situation is stabilized. For we, we, we are dealing with current problems. As we speak, there's probably an era where there's, there is an electricity challenge. We expect committees like this to hold us to account, but not about things that happened six months ago, eight months ago. Uh, that thing happened last year already, and we've, we've fixed the problem. 
That's why I'm saying that if he says that there is a problem where there is no electricity for six days now, can you indicate which area is it so that we can look into the mm. area? The issue of that area is speaking about of, of, of Kempton Park. It was last year we sorted it out. And I don't know if Mark, the whole electrical okay. engine, if he doesn't know, can, yeah, if Mark doesn't know about this so-called cable from Spartan, which should have been fixed two years ago, um, uh, uh, and he has said, yeah, he's going to bring the information because he's not aware of that, uh, of that particular case that uh, member what has claimed that would have uh, supplied electricity. And lastly, uh, even in Cape Town where you are running, when there is a problem of electricity, you don't compensate residents, right? So where do we think that money will come from? From which vote will this money come from to compensate the residents? I really appeal um, to, to the committee, uh, Madam, uh, Madam, uh, Madam Chairperson, uh, to be really firm on this thing because we are trying to, to make sure that we navigate during this difficult time. Uh, but to raise issues of last year now, even if they are not on the, on the agenda, is really taking us back. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chair, if I may come in, please. Can we, can thank we, you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Waters, can we yeah. deal with the messenger this way? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the issue of Glen Murray, it was raised in the committee in December to, uh, 2019. There's right. been progress that has been provided on that matter. Then I think then what the mayor couldn't have hear you then, it was not, he was talking to something current that has happened mm. that you can bring to the mayor's attention then that the matter will be addressed. The issue of the Glen Murray has been part of this committee, the petition, hence I requested earlier the progress report, which we all agree that there's been progress. The only issue that is outstanding is the issue of the cable that you have raised, the Spartan one that you have raised, which Mr. Wilson said he has not been aware of it, and then he has made a commitment that he's going to attend to it. So, can we, we close this meeting along those lines on these issues that any uh, other matter... Ma uh, Chair, most, most certainly. I just wanted to say that I didn't raise the glimmer issue. You did, Chair. So yes, with all due respect, yes, I, I didn't, yes. you know, um, but I felt it important to raise an issue. And if the mayor wants to know where he can get money from to compensate residents, he can do it from his disaster fund instead of buying fake vaccines for no. coronavirus. Thank no, you. No. Uh, uh, on that yeah. one, hello, hello, Honorable Mas Masina, you want to respond to that? Yeah, I think really it's an it's an unfortunate statement from Member Waters. Yeah. Really, his continuous attacking me is really unfortunate. Yeah. But I understand. Uh, I'm, I'm facilitate there's dialogue now. I'll continue yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, yeah, I please. think, I think, I, yes, we had you. We had you, Executive Mayor. Uh, the issue that uh, you have raised it to say then. Yeah, it. Go, and then who's calling the Honorable Chair. Eh? Honorable Chair. Is it you? Uh, Honorable Chair. Is it Pumza? Yes. Yes, yes. Chair, Chairperson, we have resisted to panda into this kind of debate for some time in this committee meeting today. Yes. Honorable members have continually raised matters outside the scope and the focus mm. of the very presentation that had been presented by the metro here. Mm. These continually members uh, uh, coming up and attacking the mayor is unfortunate and is intolerable. We are not going to continue to allow honorable members to continue to attack other than to debate and raise issues on the presentation made by the executive mayor. Thanks, Chair. Yes, then we are closing this meeting. Chairperson, Chairperson, yes. before you close. Yes. Can I please just, um, um, the issues I sent through to the Ekuruleni city manager, there were definitely areas last week that were out for three to five days. And the information has been sent to the city manager. I'm actually noting that she's busy responding to all my issues at the moment, just so that the mayor knows. There were is there were outages in Germiston between three and five days last week. Thank you. No, these are the matters that, like you have said, honorable member, they are being attended by the city, and then the city manager will be able to 
give you feedback on these matters, then we need to come to the way forward. Executive Mayor, we want to sincerely appreciate you with your team, including the team from the Department of Copta and Human Settlement in the province, uh, the colleagues uh, from the province. If Honorable Bergman didn't tell us that the matter is resolved, definitely we're going to expect your input on those matters. We appreciate that you, you, you have been here, you have sit, sat with us, and then you have listened to the conversation. Executive Mayor, there are issues that we have resolved that you are going to update us as we progress, but I think what we need to do as the committee is to appreciate you having come to this committee meeting and respond to, to, to issues. Uh, for us, it's a sign that you don't fear anything to be held accountable by the committee, which is also a positive on your part. And as a committee, we would like to continue to engage with you on matters that uh, communities raise. And then we want to also appreciate the work that you are doing in, in responding to this COVID-19 uh, pand pandemic. We want to appreciate the work that you are doing, and I think you will continue to reach out on those most vulnerable uh, communities uh, uh, there that needs your support. Moving forward, there's been recommendation that has been put by members, and then we've given you a timeline, and uh, Mr. Wilson is still going to come back to us on the issue of the cable that has been raised, and then I should believe with your capable team will continue, as you have indicated, the commitment that then if there are instances where in the over 300 uh, outages, as they are being said here, then there's an abnormal situation that needs your agent attention, and we believe you're going to continue to, to respond to all those issues as and when they are raised with you. Colleagues, it being the time that we need to wrap up this meeting. I just want to again confirm the attendance of members of this uh, committee meeting. Honorable Keza, Honorable Hussein, Honorable Brink, Honorable Chow, Honorable Opperman, Honorable Honorable Clark, Honorable Bergman, Honorable Waters, Honorable Inkosi Lutuli uh, and Honorable Kronewald, in that order to also appreciate the officials from the department. I've seen you on a uh, Itu mailing. Hi, Honorable Musa. Uh, honorable Musa. Honorable Musa. Honorable Musa and Honorable uh, uh, Kava, I know you have been here. It was an omission. I shouldn't be killed for that. Then to appreciate all the officials uh, uh, from the provincial government, they are also here in our present, including the CEO of MISA has been in our attendance. Yeah, that they've been, yeah, because of matters that interest them. Then we want to thank you for your time. I see there are people also from the ministry office here, including the minister's advisors, has been here listening to this conversation so that if there are matters that the minister needs the intervention, uh, 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 we will attend to that. Honorable Hussein, before we close this meeting, there's a matter that you had assured me that you will deal with it in this committee meetings as we meet. On the issue of this person who defeated the minister SNF, can we get the political parties uh, represented in this committee view so that we put it? We have issued a statement as a committee, but then can I get the political parties view on this matter so that we, we make it as also part of the committee decision? I'll start with you, Honorable Hussein, representing the DA. Then Honorable Flesh, I would say something on behalf of the EFS. And Kosi Lutuli would say something on behalf of the IFC. Honorable Honorvaj would say something on behalf of the Freedom Front Plus. And then who else in our committee, the committee members that are represented in this meeting, I think it's all of you.
can we start in, and then honorable mm -hmm. where you did the last one talk with you. honorable um, sorry. sorry chair it's Taza. i didn't yes. i didn't hear the issue that we're going to be speaking on because of the network please can you the issue <laughs> of the racist remark towards our minister uh, you remember there was a picture by one uh, SLC. Uh, you'll hear it as an uh, honorable sentence with it. Okay. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. I, uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity that you give all of us uh, to deal with this issue. And uh, I'm, I'm sure my, my, my good mayor there uh, will also listen in because he's. I know that he's made a comment earlier. So... This item you you have now raised on the agenda will, will satisfy him. Uh, thank you, firstly, for uh, entertaining my my you suggestion. Live to you. Poor mayor alone. <laughs> no, no, but the, but but the mayor was correct in that he he was correct in that he said you know he hasn't heard us speak out about this, so which is why I, I am calling his attention to it. Um, I want to appreciate, Chair, that you, you allowed the opportunity for us to be able to at least make a comment on, on this matter, because I think it is significant and I think it is serious. Uh, and I don't want to, to describe in particular uh, the, the, the social media post by, that was put up by one gentleman, um, because I think just the description alone of that, uh, of that social media post is, is so abhorrent that I wouldn't even want to go into the detail, but safe to say, that in a recent say, Facebook uh, post, uh, a gentleman uh, uh, depicted or described the minister of Cocta as, as an animal of some sort. And I wanted us uh, as a committee chairperson to say the following, that notwithstanding the fact that we, on a regular basis, and you know I am generally outspoken about some of these things, in that we, we criticize our minister heavily, uh, for some of the things that she has done or may have not done, but that's the principle of, uh, you know, the oversight that, that we are all uh, uh, burdened with, and uh, that's our responsibility, which we take seriously, and, and, and I appreciate the fact that the minister takes it in the spirit in which we give it sometimes. But there's a limit, Chairperson, and I think that this individual who posted a very racist cartoon of our minister on Facebook has crossed that line, which in my view uh, is simply not acceptable. And I, I, I speak um, uh, on behalf of my political party as well, in which we want to register our very deep uh, 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 disappointment and anger at the manner in which that Facebook post has described the Minister of Cooperative Governance. In this day and age, Chairperson, it's simply not acceptable for anybody in our society to compare any human being with another animal. And to do such a chairperson does not advance in any way whatsoever the kind of society that we all want to build in our country where we show respect for each other. By all means, we can dis uh, disagree with each other, we can debate with each other, and there are times, even on this portfolio committee and in our parliament, that those debates become very heated. But there is a line that none of us should cross. And to depict any, any human being, let alone a minister or a senior leader or even an elderly person, is a line that we must never, ever cross. And I, I do hope that the, the strongest and the harshest pen, uh, punishment will be meted out to that individual who has described the minister as, um, as, as some sort of animal, which is really, really simply not acceptable. It's not the society we want to build, Chairperson. And my, my appeal to, to us as a portfolio committee is to stand united and speak harshly and strongly against these type of, uh, um, of, of hatred that is being shared on our social media. There is an opportunity for all of us to be able to stand together, show respect for each other, and regardless of the views that we might express, be they political or ideological, um, what we should never ever be doing is to, is to refer or to compare any human being with another animal. People must remember that when we show hatred towards each other and in that kind of fashion in which this gentleman 
I forget his name now, has done so on social media, that our minister is a mother, is a sister, and a human being, and a leader in our society. Not acceptable. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to follow your committee in, in, in which... Uh, thank you, Honorable Hussain. Honorable Bruce, are you okay, or you'll come after the others? I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity to speak. Uh, we want to express our our total uh, disappointment with regards to that comment or any comment in any social media that seeks to to infringe on anyone's uh, um, uh, constitutional right, particularly the issue of racism that we have seen uh, uh, in recent years. Uh, it's quite prevalent. Uh, these, these issues, Chair, have not been uh, spoken in, to in earnest. And every time uh, we speak against them, uh, in the in the in the circles of the EF, in the socialist circles of the EFF, uh, there is there is quite resistance and many many court uh, appearances and many many uh, resistance that we in a society like ours, an unequal society like ours, I think that we need to speak truth to power. Racism must just fall. We don't have time for a backward society. Like, like like that one. We don't have time for backward people like that. We are a progressive movement. We are a progressive people. We want to, to build a premise uh, where generations upon generations realize justice in their own country because they have nowhere to go. Uh, we, we want to realize equal society. And, and in order to do that, we must at, at, at all times speak truth to power so that we arrest all the injustices of society as it were. And, and uh, if uh, uh, there's, there's resistance within the system itself uh, that seeks to, 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 put, to put us at the, at the, at the back foot, there must be, the, 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 the law must take its, uh, its course uh, through, 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 through judiciary to actually arrest uh, with speed. Uh, such 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 a behavior because obviously there are people in our society who wish uh, we, we we could be we who reminisce about apartheid who reminisce about uh, uh, individual uh, needs who reminisce who are still uh, 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 protected uh, in a sense uh, to the detriment and and the demise of, of of the concerns of our people so that must be must be must, must start must be a central part of our struggle today uh, to deal with such things decisively, to deal with such individuals decisively and, uh, and realize uh, justice. Uh, so we speak against uh, uh, such things of, of depicting the minister as, as an animal in this day and age. It can't be, it can't, it can't, it can't, it can't, it can't be sustainable. It can't, it can't be allowed. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Eza, uh, Honorable uh, Inkosi Lutuli. Th thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, we we rejected this, this what is happening to to our minister, and by comparing a, a human being as, a, as, a, as, a, as an animal. Uh, that's why we have to start rooting out the, the, the upper deed because even at this present moment, after 26 years of democracy, there are certain people who are still uh, uh, full of apartheid or full of racism. Really, uh, we reject it. And then I don't know how are we going to deal with it, uh, the apartheid itself, because that is, is 
is saying to us, we are still having that apartheid. The apartheid is not doomed yet. Thank you very much. Chair. Honorable Khunirbat. Thank you, Honorable Lituli. Honorable Khunirbat. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for the opportunity. Chairperson, yes, um, I think we must all condone actions like that. Um, the Freedom Front stance is always to say that we have to have mutual respect. But in terms of that, I also want to say that if the, the way we act in terms of these people, we must do it across the board. We must do it white on black racism, but also black on white racism. We mustn't only take it as one side, we must can I say, convict all racism within South Africa. Thank you, Chairperson. And Honorable Mpomza. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. First, Chairperson, let's commend you for the statement that you have released. Uh, the context and the, the context in which you raised was very appropriate. And it was actually trying to obliterate the message that is sent to the public that our honorable minister is an animal. It is unfortunate for a person that uh, in our time, in this very age, we will still have uh, a, a video post of this nature that are running parallel uh, to our priorities on social cohesion, nation building. Uh, secondly, this is what we have been saying all along in our struggle that. Uh, we should always uh, focus our, our battles towards uh, the demon of racism and uh, so that uh, it is obliterated out of our society. We cannot have a nation building in South Africa as a priority. That in the midst we still see racism rearing its head where people are framed uh, as animals, not as human beings. In fact, if in this context of saying that uh, there is a, a race, in fact, uh, there is only one human race that must be ingrained in the minds of the people, that there is only one human race, and we should give equal respect to each. So this attack on the minister was unfortunate, and uh, we condemn it with all the contempt it deserves, and we hope that this matter will rest and all the other attacks on Honorable Gosazana by people, not only only by only this uh, social this uh, social uh, video, by the attacks on the minister, on the person, is condemned. The person will actually support your statement. We think that it was appropriate and it was timely. It actually dispelled the message that had been sent to the public about the character and the conduct as well as uh, the humanity of Gosaza and Laminizoma. Thank you very much, Shell. Okay, before we adjourn, Shirin, what time are we meeting tomorrow for the benefit of those who log in late? What time are we meeting tomorrow? Shirin, are you there? It seems like she's not uh, uh, here, Chair, but we are meeting at 6 according to the program. 6 o'clock is city, uh, city of um, Tuan. Tuan. Yes. Can we urge the colleagues from Tokta, you still need to come with us tomorrow, ne? You too, and team. Uh, you need to be here again tomorrow at 6 because there, there are matters that we need to seriously raise with yourselves. So I, I can bank on your attendance. Maybe the MEC will also be available tomorrow. Uh, we will be meeting at 6. Then the meeting gets adjourned. Colleagues, I want to sincerely appreciate uh, you for being here up to, we have already taken 26 minutes of Parliament's time. This meeting was supposed to have adjourned, but there was the matter that I felt we need to attend to and address because yesterday we couldn't do it because we had a joint committee meeting but nevertheless uh, i want to thank you all the meeting gets attended till we meet again tomorrow and then for the city of ecroland team led by the executive mayor till we meet again thank you so much thank you chair thank you thank you chair
Thank you. Ma'am, Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Kunja Ntaza. Kunja Ntaza. I'm not doing well, man. 